Good morning, everybody. This is the second day of uh, Baltic Fire Forum, and I'm really happy to meet you here again. Uh, there's a new whole day of presentations, very interesting presentations, and I'm really happy to, first of all, uh, invite to our Baltic Fire Forum uh, Lithuanian fire safety expert uh, Edvardas Harjauskas, who will represent his company Polyprojektas, with a very interesting topic, basically for HVAC and uh, smoke exhaust engineers, who will hear uh, the real problematics while designing uh, smoke exhaust systems with overpressure problems uh, and giving some more uh, air supply than... Uh, again giving less air supply so as far as we've discussed all this issue even uh, earlier uh, in uh, terms of uh, national fire protection association of lithuania uh, those things are mostly seen during the hot smoke tests if you do not do any tests uh, after the designing and implementing the system you cannot see the real efficiency well uh, maybe you can see the uh, the bigger overpressure systems when you just can't uh, enter the safe staircase in, in this case, but you will never see the real problems of uh, air supply and smoke exhaust. So there we shall see the staircases, smoke exhaust, air supply. These are the things that are more and more getting more and more problematic, especially when passing the expertise. So, Edwardas, the floor is yours and we are waiting for your presentation. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Edwardas. I'm representing uh, uh, company Polyprojectas, uh, which are designing uh, uh, fire safety uh, uh, engineering systems and uh, and uh, wall uh, fire safety concept uh, of the building. And uh, today I would like to to talk about um, uh, smoke extraction and overpressure systems um, about uh, such as things uh, which are uh, between let's say between regulations uh, between uh, uh, scope of uh, standards and and so on uh, this is some some kind of uh, um, uh, let's say mistakes but uh, but uh, sometimes it cannot be uh, announced like uh, like uh, uh, mistakes by law uh, because it's uh, according uh, regulation uh, uh, but uh, Still, um, uh, we have uh, some uh, bad things uh, with these uh, systems uh, uh, in a wall uh, fire safety concept. Uh, let's start with the introduction that uh, smoke extraction and over pressure systems in the buildings uh, uh, are one of the most important active fire protection systems, the proper function of uh, which can directly affect our health and lives and people in buildings. It's quite important uh, engineering, uh, uh, one of the most important engineering uh, fire safety system uh, because it's um, uh, actuating uh, in a, a first phase of uh, evacuation. Uh, that means uh, if those systems um, cannot uh, work or uh, properly, or or they they are <clears throat> uh, simply um, designed uh, with uh, such as mistakes, uh, uh, we we will have uh, possibly we will have uh, uh, some bad issues and uh, and uh, and it can be cost uh, the highest cost it can be. Um, uh, uh, lives of, of, of people and, and, and healthy and, and so on. Um, what we have, we have, uh, let's see, um, a simple uh, situation when the smoker host uh, uh, organizing by shaft uh, near the staircases uh, of evacuation. Um, here we have uh, the, the window with the air Flow air inlet uh, to the to the uh, this uh, system, and um, 
what what is wrong with with such as uh, uh, with such as uh, location of uh, smoke exhaust uh, uh, point it's uh, that uh, that uh, we will have um, uh, suction uh, of uh, smoke to the staircases where where is uh, um, direction of of evacuation and uh, <clears throat> we have uh, made a uh, uh, few examples uh, of course we have uh, made a lot of uh, uh, calculations and, and the designing process uh, but uh, uh, for this presentation we just made a few uh, comparing uh, uh, calculations and um, uh, after this uh, uh, we we calculated few different uh, um, uh, simulations and modeling <clears throat> and uh, what we did, what we have uh, discovered that uh, um, uh, if uh, we have um, uh, smoke exhaust and and uh, uh, air supply uh, over there let's say and fire <clears throat> modeling uh, let's say here uh, <clears throat> we we um, uh, we we have in the very few minutes of uh, procedure proceeding of of, uh, of the fire we have very few uh, minutes it's uh, 120 seconds uh, according model uh, and uh, there we have um, uh, smoke uh, direction you can see it uh, here uh, to the to the evacuation staircase it's it's not good it's uh, it's dangerous and uh, if we can compare another situation when uh, air, when we are switching air supply uh, with uh, smoke air uh, uh, point uh, let's say um, we have we will have a completely different uh, situation and this uh, it will be opposite uh, uh, those uh, uh, worse situation so uh, smoke smoke host uh, uh, should be uh, uh, should have some some uh, 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 distance uh, from from the from the evacuation staircases uh, if is if is not um, uh, if it's not um, yeah, uh, possible sometimes of uh, difficult architectural structure and uh, a difficult um, uh, architectural, uh, 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 let's say, design. Uh, we we cannot sometimes uh, uh, do in in this right way, and we should uh, have uh, here uh, uh, the smoke exhaust. Uh, in that case, uh, what we need to do, we, we need to um, uh, calculate and uh, uh, model uh, another uh, uh, another uh, possibility to have a different way to evacuation, to different uh, evacuation route, and uh, uh, what we have uh, uh, another possibility is, is to, to have overtime uh, uh, to launch uh, uh, smoke exhaust system, and uh, uh, but but another problem uh, what uh, what we need to solve in such a situation we need to uh, to calculate uh, exactly uh, how long it can take uh, this uh, overtime uh, before uh, starting the uh, smoke exhaust system. And uh, if we if we uh, not doing this uh, this calculation, uh, we are we we are uh, have risk uh, uh, to start uh, to launch this system too early and uh, and, and can and uh, such as such as the mistake uh, can uh, can uh, be very very expensive uh, for 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 people. Uh, which which are choosing uh, this evacuation route. Uh, here we have the same situation, uh, only in uh, 180 seconds. It's only one minute more, and uh, uh, 
the visibility is uh, mentioned by 10 meters and we we see uh, that that we have uh, uh, we have uh, uh, smoke on, on this evacuation road there we have uh, 280 seconds uh, uh, and it's uh, that's mean it's uh, 4 minutes and uh, and and we have uh, and we have uh, evacuation uh, road completely uh, smoked and uh, and uh, uh, another option is when when we have uh, uh, air supply uh, near uh, evacuation staircases uh, we have uh, clear uh, evacuation road that mean uh, clear for evacuation from the building and clear for fire safety services uh, which which need to, to supply uh, and and do actions for for fire uh, casing and and uh, and, uh, and and closing this uh, fire uh, here there we have uh, uh, one more slide uh, it's uh, more more time uh, another another thing uh, what we want to discuss shortly uh, here is uh, fds modeling uh, model uh, to to <clears throat> show how it uh, can be a problem when uh, uh, smoke exhaust uh, and air supply uh, is uh, near um, and uh, and uh, the distance of air supply and, and smoke exhaust is uh, is quite uh, quite close and uh, we have a uh, few additional uh, smoke exhaust uh, uh, points but uh, they actually in, in such as uh, 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 in such as moment uh, they are not uh, working properly uh, so in this uh, case we have um, uh, fire uh, and um, after 200 uh, uh, seconds uh, we have uh, uh, smoke uh, visibility is also 10 minutes uh, uh, 10 10 meters sorry and uh, what what we say what we see that uh, uh, here we have uh, uh, no smoke exhausting. There, there is no smoke exhausting because uh, uh, smoke, uh, uh, the system of smoke exhausting, uh, are sucking uh, uh, more uh, air than than smoke. And and uh, uh, here we have in this uh, in this uh, area uh, worse situation. Uh, but uh, uh, but we know we remember that over here we have a smoke exhaust um, point. So uh, such a mistake, um, it's um, uh, better uh, to avoid, and uh, even better, uh, in my opinion, in such a place, uh, uh, not to 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 put any uh, smoke exhaust uh, point. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, and that and that uh, the the best uh, moment is uh, to move uh, small uh, air um, uh, air supply to to the system uh, uh, higher also be in this in this plan, but uh, but um, but if we we don't have uh, uh, another um, options we we need to organize uh, some kind of different uh, uh, smoke reservoirs and use uh, smoke curtains or, or doors or, or some uh, light walls uh, to, to organize uh, uh, another um, uh, air uh, convections and another situation for, for air smoke, uh, for smoke uh, um, uh, uh, exhaust. Here we have um, another problem uh, 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 when we have um, 
not uh, not enough uh, air inlet uh, air air supply for uh, for uh, the mechanical smoke exhaust system and uh, natural uh, smoke exhaust system here we have uh, uh, model with uh, natural smoke exhaust system by Atrium. Uh, here we have uh, in the first floor air supply through the door. And here we have the um, same situation, but uh, different is uh, that we have a mechanical smoke exhaust system in, in, in the same, uh, in the same uh, Atrium. And uh, how it looks uh, uh, when when the the air is uh, not uh, not enough. Uh, uh, we we see that uh, that in the even in the first uh, phase of uh, of calculation, uh, it's um, it's uh, three hundred uh, uh, seconds. Um, we 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 have a situation when when the gravitation is not enough. Gravitation it's a, it's a, a more and in this area and the smoke is falling down. And um, in in with mechanical system we 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 have some suction, but uh, uh, we can see that. Uh, in, in this zone, we have some kind uh, of uh, um, a smoke uh, <clears throat> reservoir, uh, which which not uh, which is not designed, let's say, and this which which is not uh, uh, needed here. We need to to suck this uh, uh, smoke uh, to the, uh, the ventilator. Uh, but um, but we have uh, a problem when when this um, uh, air uh, supply is, is not enough. Uh, of course, uh, after a few time more uh, wider, uh, we we have uh, um, this situation with natural uh, uh, smoke exhaust system. Uh, uh, worse and worse uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, for mechanical system we have that we have some section but it's not enough uh, because here we have a uh, lot of uh, smoke and and the level of uh, smoke is uh, much uh, lower than two and two and a half meters um, according to regulation Here we have uh, same uh, situation, only only wider. So it, it's uh, quite a, quite a simple moment uh, to to not not forget uh, uh, to um, do air supply uh, enough uh, and calculate uh, uh, square meters what we need uh, to to this uh, system. Let's say. And uh, another thing uh, for such as air supply um, uh, openings, uh, we need uh, uh, guarantee uh, first class of uh, uh, electrical supply and uh, calculate like um, such as air supply systems also calculate like uh, life safety, part of life safety system. Uh, and uh, and uh, <clears throat> guarantee uh, opening in in uh, in the fire uh, moment uh, and when when there's uh, mechanical or natural uh, smoke uh, exhaust system uh, uh, need to be uh, working. Uh, Another problem, what uh, what I would like uh, to to discuss the uh, problem, uh, I don't know, is uh, uh, when when smoke exhaust system it's uh, really really small uh, and it's uh, 
air supply will we have air supply enough uh, uh, amount of, of, of cubic meters uh, per hour but uh, smoke exhaust uh, uh, it's uh, just too, too low it's only let's say 10,000 cubic meter per hour and uh, here we have a parking uh, here we have a, a, a car with, uh, uh, with, uh, with the fire and uh, <clears throat> uh, sometimes uh, uh, when the, the parking is, is, is small um, people are thinking that it's, uh, uh, it's uh, quite small and it's, uh, uh, there is no need to, to have a bigger uh, big, um, uh, amount of uh, extracting uh, uh, smoke extracting system and, and uh, they just uh, put uh, quite small um, small amount and and uh, with the um, perspective that uh, uh, evacuation will be um, really fast uh, and uh, and uh, there there are no dangers in in such as uh, um, small uh, areas but um, what what we have uh, that we have in, in 70 in seconds it's a uh, uh, a critical situation uh, with, the, with the smoke uh, visibility is uh, also 10 meters and we we, we can see that it's uh, quite um, quite um, problematic it looks even after 17 um, uh, seconds and uh, there we have uh, evacuation uh, population uh, that uh, in uh, we have in, in uh, 60, 84 uh, seconds. Uh, we have uh, only evacuation. That means it's uh, it's it's not safe uh, for for the people um, to evacuate uh, to to evacuate such as car parking. It's not safe for people. And uh, in this moment, sometimes it's not compared uh, with uh, evacuation time and evacuation. Uh, um, models and uh, and uh, possible um, problems uh, uh, when when uh, one of evacuation road uh, is closed. So uh, it's a simple simple moment, uh, let's say, but uh, but still uh, we have a lot of uh, moments uh, uh, when we are doing uh, expertizing. Um, uh, projects and and <clears throat> and, and, and checking uh, situation uh, this this moment it's quite uh, often what uh, what is uh, another uh, point uh, uh, when we are calculating uh, uh, um, smoke exhaust with a uh, PDS uh, with um, uh, modeling uh, uh, we have such as um, uh, let's say uh, typical uh, 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 coefficients for the uh, suit uh, and, and, and other uh, oxygen atoms uh, hydrogen atoms and and, um, and other reaction parameters and uh, <clears throat> what what can we see that uh, it's um, uh, only uh, basic uh, parameters for for let's say simple calculation but it's not um, uh, those parameters uh, 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 from fds uh, database uh, it's not uh, co co correlating with a uh, um, test made at uh, by by universities uh, let's see uh, for example uh, about the suit uh, what we are using in the models uh, uh, according uh, let's say one of uh, sweden university lund uh, uh, they discovered that uh, suit for 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 the modeling uh, should be not less than uh, 0 0.03 and uh, in the FDS data we have uh, 005 it's uh, 
four uh, times uh, uh, lower uh, lower uh, coefficient, and it's uh, it's not enough uh, for the modeling. The, the same is uh, with uh, uh, shopping centers. Uh, let's say we have um, according uh, test and and uh, we have uh, zero zero six. Uh, and uh, here we have uh, zero zero two one. It's two times. So be careful and uh, and uh, uh, with with such as uh, coefficients uh, because it's um, your models uh, just made it uh, by typical uh, uh, according typical FDS um, uh, uh, coefficients. It's um, it will be not. Uh, not not good, not uh, realistic, and uh, and the calculate all calculation it will be uh, uh, wrong. Here we have um, uh, about uh, burning cars. Uh, it's uh, most mostly uh, uh, people are using uh, with the modeling uh, 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 this. Uh, uh, hot release rate um, curve uh, for the uh, cars in the car parking, uh, or we can use uh, uh, typical uh, Eurocode uh, uh, curves uh, for fire, fast fire, uh, medium uh, fire, and slow fire, but uh, still. Uh, uh, I I prepare uh, this uh, curve because it's uh, more realistic, and uh, it's made uh, this curve made by a lot of testing, uh, and uh, this curve is made by um, a lot of um, uh, European uh, fire safety uh, laboratories, and it's um, uh, more more useful. Uh, another moment when we are doing calculation and, and modeling, uh, uh, another let's say mistake uh, when when we have uh, uh, two models. Uh, one of them is let's say for uh, smoke and and temperature and uh, and uh, the, uh, um, gases in a, in a fire uh, in the, in a fire moment. Um, but uh, when we are doing uh, uh, simulation of evacuation, uh, we are doing through this, uh, uh, let's say, uh, fire uh, burner and uh, fireplace. And uh, it's just people uh, often, uh, they not uh, compare uh, same same moment uh, that uh, if we if we are modeling station with uh, fire load here and uh, and burner here uh, we need to uh, <clears throat> calculate the equation also uh, uh, with uh, fire load here and 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 not uh, uh, shown uh, uh, the road of equation through this uh, the fi this fire road uh, how it uh, looks in 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 this uh, slide another thing uh, is uh, <clears throat> about uh, comparing uh, the, the 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 systems uh, between uh, 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 between themselves uh, it's uh, <clears throat> when we have uh, uh, in the same uh, building uh, over pressure and uh, we have uh, uh, smoke exhaust. Uh, uh, what what is what is the danger? Because uh, when we we have um, <clears throat> evacuation road uh, and evacuation doors opening uh, through the um, the the lobby uh, with overpressure, uh, uh, fire are opening inside uh, with the direction for. Uh, in the same direction uh, uh, like an evacuation road uh, 
Uh, and um, here we have a smoke exhaust uh, shafts and smoke exhaust system. And here we have uh, overpressure in the staircase uh, over there, in the lobby uh, over there. What we what we will have uh, that uh, if uh, the smoke um, exhaust uh, uh, is not enough, uh, uh, you have not enough um, uh, air supply. Uh, then we, th then uh, uh, the system can be sucked, and the doors will be sucked, and uh, over pressure will push the, uh, with the double uh, uh, power the doors, and uh, when the people uh, will want to, to go out uh, from there, and they they will stuck just uh, because the um, the power of of opening. Uh, uh, doors, uh, it will be um, uh, much uh, much uh, bigger uh, than in uh, uh, according uh, uh, norms and uh, and standards, and uh, in it it will uh, and uh, this situation uh, will close all evacuation routes. It's it's uh, quite uh, difficult to calculate uh, such as. Uh, 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 powers uh, how to to calculate its uh, met method methods uh, are not uh, uh, so really clear uh, in the method uh, in the methods uh, are not so really clear uh, uh, shown and um, and uh, uh, just uh, such as problem is uh, let's say between uh, the regulation and uh, because because uh, uh, it, all the system have uh, different regulation and a different documentation uh, let's say and uh, uh, they are not, not um, sometimes they are not um, uh, correlating between so that's all uh, i hope uh, i i show you a few moments uh, which are uh, according to practice uh, according to our uh, uh, practice in the calculations and the testing of uh, um, the fire safety systems and uh, according to uh, um, uh, problems what we see in the, in the buildings uh, in the, uh, when we are doing expect uh, 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 inspection in the, in the, in the buildings in the new buildings and in and uh, in the old also uh, so be careful with uh, with uh, such as moments uh, which are not so really uh, clearly shown in the norms uh, and uh, but uh, those moments uh, those uh, quite uh, uh, knowledge uh, let's say uh, are really important and uh, and uh, can uh, let's say uh, how I, I say it can be uh, uh, have a really bad uh, bad uh, result. Thank you all. Take care. Uh, thank you very much, Edward. Uh, I think all the expertise now will have a much easier job while listening to, to your comments and uh, having your best practice in, in uh, designing the smoke exhaust system. Now, the next topic is, uh, in my point of view, very interesting and very recent. Uh, well, not so long ago, we had a very tremendous big uh, tire storage fire in the city of Alitos, which took, you know, almost a week to, to extinguish and to control the fire, which led into uh, also very uh, big ecological crisis. How to deal with the fire is one thing. How to deal with the water supply for, for extinguishing uh, such a fire is another problem. And Paulus Grigalunas from Sveko Lietova will represent this uh, topic. So. Polus, the floor is yours.
Hello. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for having me in this conference. It's, uh, it's really a big pleasure for me to, to, to be here and to present my topic, which I would say is booming last years, and especially when pandemic situation striked. I would say that digitalization topic, uh, topics are on the fire, and uh, water management is not uh, exception as well. So let me introduce my topic which is about sustainable firefighting analysis and uh, using hydraulic models of urban water supply systems. And I will shortly present you a real case study from Lithuania, from Molito city. And my name is Paulus Grigalunas, and I work in, uh, in Sveco, Lithuania as a project manager. And last year, I work a lot with, uh, with uh, digital models of, of water management systems. And here on the right side, you see um, the general topics of today's presentation. Uh, I will briefly present you uh, what is up to date, or let's say modern, modern hydraulic model, and uh, how it is integrated into digital or digital twin uh, framework or, or, or models. I will also briefly uh, present you what are the major steps the new build a model and what are the digital integrations between GIS systems and other systems which which uses uh, water utility companies. Uh, the next big portion will be a uh, case study, case study from Alito City. I will briefly explain you how the model works, what can be checked uh, in case of uh, fires, and I will also conclude and give you some some summaries or future uh, insights. Uh, uh, yeah, for for the future, how the models could be used uh, and how they could be uh, make even better. Okay, so what is the hydraulic model of water network? Um, in very general or general perspective, hydraulic model is a big piece of CAKE and CITES digital twin model. I am absolutely sure that uh, most of you know what is hydraulic model, but in case of uh, having some different understandings, um, I would briefly present you what is the modern uh, digital model. And this topic is constantly changing and evaluating. The general purpose of this uh, slide is to make sure that we talk about the same and from the same perspective. And as you prob probably noticed, the background picture presents uh, the con constantly changing environment where everyone is so busy in growing cities, especially in big uh, mega cities. So water management networks are growing as well. And uh, the general question is, do they grow sustainably? Uh, do we really cope with uh, all upcoming problems like water scarcity, climate change, and frequent uh, fires, uh, as well as uh, extreme temperatures and so on? Those factors affect water management system at a very high level. And I would say uh, in Lithuania last year's uh, where I would say it were totally crazy because uh, temperatures, water, uh, what, uh, not water, but uh, air temperatures during the summer are growing and water demands are growing as well. So systems have to cope with that. And in case of emergency or in case of fire, uh, you need uh, you need to check if you have enough water to to cope with your fires and and to work with that. So digitalization comes into action to solve many problems in this case. And hydraulic model is a piece of cake in this big picture. And here on the right side uh, of the screen, you see some abbreviations of digital models what they have to represent and what general tasks tasks are assigned to them. For example, digital models have to represent the assets in the physical world with a digital model. And the models are not just the models, they have to include relation interactions. Uh, they have to look and feel like real environment. 
they have to simulate models uh, forward with varying uh, degrees of uh, precision. Uh, they have to be autonomous and also uh, in the near future, they will make some decisions. I, um, I talk about uh, artificial intelligence integrations and so on. And it also has to connect with uh, relevant time data to ensure a model uh, mirrors reality in real time. Okay, so what are the major tasks for hydraulic modeling? Uh, so these are the very major and very general tasks like sustainable maintenance of water network system, uh, water network optimization and network performance uh, questions and tasks, uh, how to reduce power consumption, how to reduce uh, water loss and water scarcity, how to control water age and quality water age means uh, the time from 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 the time when water is extracted from the wells until the final final uh, client also it also helps in planning and sustainable development of water supply networks and optimal use of uh, existing network resources and the last but not least uh, fires how to analyze fires, how to uh, uh, how to calculate uh, fire water flows and so on. And today I will talk about that. And in very, in very general, it has to simulate situation and give you the answers. What if, uh, what if something goes wrong? For example, you have some power losses in uh, wells, in pumping stations, uh, you have to close some parts of, of your network system, and so on. And those are the major steps which you have to, to, to do when you create a digital model of, of your water system. Um, there are some, some big uh, groups, or let's say steps, which you have to, to do uh, before you create uh, really good and uh, real-time based uh, hydraulic model so at first you have to uh, have sustainable asset management and digital uh, attribute system uh, you have to also work with your GIS, uh, gis system and topology plans and only then you can create uh, your digital model and uh, after that, of course, you can um, make your model, let's say, more live. You can integrate it with uh, GIS, SCADA, or asset management systems. You can integrate it with uh, BIM, uh, building information models. Then you can have a real, um, real uh, digital water model. Then you see all the pipes as a real uh, as a real uh, structures and uh, the last uh, box let's say it's a digital control room uh, where you can control your management system your water management system let's say from home for example okay and here we have uh, sustainable architecture, the layout of sustain sustainable architecture of hydraulic model system. And scheme shows major integrations, integration blocks with existing city or water utility company data. And I will quickly represent you those integrations and their advantages, especially for firefighting. Uh, so the big block is direct custom meter integration. If you want to, to have real-time data, if you want to uh, check the real situation in, uh, in your system, you have to also have uh, real-time data from, from your customers. Um, then the next block is uh, GIS, the database integration. If something is changed in the system, you can quickly update uh, your digital model. Um, with your GIS uh, system. And also very important question when you talk about uh, firefighting, 
real-time SCADA data integration. When you have a big fire, you can uh, see the real situation in your model, and also it represents uh, the real-time situation in your water network. Then you can make uh, changes uh, very fast, and you can see how those changes or water demand uh, affects uh, your real-time uh, real model and also real situation. And those are uh, very general breakthroughs or general ideas why you need to have uh, why you need to have uh, real uh, or let's say digital models of water management systems. And um, the good practice in water management and fire safety system design is that at first you create a hydraulic model, you test it, you test everything, you find uh, perfect solutions, and only then design and build. And uh, the best option is that you test uh, your hydraulic model and uh, water management system in the master planning stages. Water management and fire safety standards and rules, uh, also instructions uh, for fire hydrants, flows, pressures, management, safety, and so on. Um, are they really comply with the rules and system designers or maintenance engineers without models? Uh, this is the question. Then you design systems, but how do you, you know that uh, you have enough uh, water, enough pressure uh, in any point of your uh, real uh, water management system? You can check that with a model at first and then design um, uh, your system. The next question is how do we plan water and fire water future developments? How do we know that our system works efficiently and sustainably? And in case you are a plot owner and you want to uh, use existing water pipes for fire, uh, for fire water systems, and water utility company gives you only the half of your demand what to do and uh, maybe there is an option uh, to receive or to get the full capacity or full um, water demand but that uh, must be checked uh, in the hydraulic model first and in case of fire how do we test check control and monitor water demands and uh, and, and whole system status and the last one how do we design water management systems which complies with fire safety standards and green ideas? And now, uh, since we have uh, some information, what is a hydraulic model and what are the major components of hydraulic model? Uh, let's move on to the real case uh, study in Alitus City. So we have four different scenarios uh, on the left side of the screen. Uh, you see what are the fire flows, uh, what is the, du the duration of, of, of the fires. And on the right side of the screen, um, you see very rough and very quickly uh, represented uh, um, system layout in, in Alito City. Uh, here we have two different uh, pressure zones, a uh, high pressure zone and low pressure zone. And you see two fires fire number one and fire number two here you also see that system has some reservoirs and uh, pumping stations and now let's jump to to the fire scenario number one g1 uh, so first fire or fire number one the uh, demand of water is 25 liters per second and fire number two uh, is two hydrants under 25 liters per second so in total we have 50 liters per second and it's very important uh, to say that uh, we test the fire during uh, during uh, uh, the time from 8 to 9 p.m then when the water uh, demand from from the whole city is is higher so total fire duration is three hours and uh, quickly i will quickly just give you 
few uh, few sentences about uh, results. Uh, in this case, water management system status is okay, and only some moderate fire flow pressures in uh, higher altitude areas is only is about uh, 1.6 bars, and that is okay, I would say. Okay, let's jump to to the fire scenario number two. Now we have fire number one, 25 liters per second. Fire number two, five hydrants under 25 liters per second. So in total, we have 100 liters per second in fire number two. Uh, time duration is the same uh, from 6 to 9 p.m. And here we have some different results. I would say that water management system status in general is OK. Um, but we have some. Uh, some lower uh, pressure zones, like 1.5 uh, bars in higher altitude areas. But uh, in total, I would say that uh, this fire is is uh, not so big, and uh, water management system can cope and can work with that. Okay, fire number three. Um, the general idea to check to check uh, this scenario scenario was to check what is the maximum available water flow in selected fire locations. So we have two fires and we want to know what is the maximum uh, fire water flow is available in, in, in the system. And we also want to check minimum pressure in nodes uh, in, in all uh, management system in pipes. And when, when in, we want to be sure that uh, we have at least one bar and water level in high pressure reservoirs uh, at least one 0 0.3 meters. Okay, so we don't have uh, uh, we don't have uh, flow uh, flows uh, in in two different uh, fires, but we can calculate that. So the results are that water management system status is okay. And the maximum available flow rates in those two fires are 20 liters in fire number one and 125 liters in fire number two. Uh, and we calculated the scenario, then you use five hydrants uh, in fire number two. OK, and uh, scenario number four which is a really big fire, I would say. And the general questions were, uh, what is the maximum available water flow, uh, water flow in selected uh, fire locations? And we also want to know uh, if we have enough pressure in those fires. Uh, but in this case, uh, we designed uh, two uh, fires with selected fire flows. Fire number one, 25 liters per second, and fire number two, in total, we have 150 liters per second. Uh, fire starts at uh, 6 p.m., but uh, the duration is actually, it's unlimited. We want to check uh, what happens after, let's say, uh, two days or three days um of of the fire is extinguishing uh, process so the results are that after 40 or let's say until 40 hours from 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 the start of, of fire system works okay and the status is good but what happens after for uh, 40 hours we have some some problems there uh, we have moderate fires, uh, fire flow pressures, uh, which are under one bar in higher altitudes, which is not good. After 40 hours after after a fire start, uh, high pressure reservoirs got empty, and the pressure drops to 0 0.4 bars. And pressure at number two, at fire number two, drops to 0 0.8 bars. And here we have some, some graphs. 
uh, graph number, not number, but uh, graphs A shows uh, uh, shows the level in the high pressure zone reservoir. And you see that after 40 hours, uh, the reservoir gets empty. And uh, graph number, uh, graph B uh, shows, shows you uh, the pressure, pressure and fire number two. Uh, and on the right side of the screen, you can see um, hydrants, uh, which, uh, which works under very low pressures. The pressures uh, of water is about 0 0.4 and, and even lower. Okay, so we have some, some conclusions and some future insights about uh, about uh, digital models and how they could be used uh, in fire safety. So in case of large scale fire events, time is critical. Complete uh, hydraulic model system are able to model critical water management aspects like fire water flow, pressure, uh, pressure drops, ensure that critical urban infrastructure like for example, hospitals uh, will be unaffected by fire water insufficiency. Um, for firefighting details and scenarios were tested, two of them were critical for existing infrastructure due to flow and pressure insurance. Uh, well, in overall, Alito's water management uh, network is powerful enough to cope with fires, but on the other hand, uh, design of sustainable water management system includes many aspects, not only, only fire flows. Um, aspects like water age uh, in pipes, uh, power consumption system, installation costs, maintenance costs, uh, and there's always a balance between many parameters. In case of fire, uh, there is an option to raise the pump pressure in pumping stations. However, old pipes could break uh, in or, or water losses in existing pipes, uh, holes uh, is exponent. Um, and in summary, the design and plan or development uh, or optimization stage of water supply networks and facilities requires a comprehensive assessment and large number of conditions. And the prevention of uh, firefighting is important part of this task. Um, hydraulic model helps to find sustainable solutions and comprehensively assess uh, the issues of pipeline diameter selection, electricity consumption, water loss, assurance, um, selection of various uh, equipment, and as well as to ensure fire safety of communities and water users. So that was it from, from my side. And thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions, uh, please write me or, or, or just call me. You can see contacts of, of me. And I will also I would also like to, to say thank you for my colleagues uh, who work together uh, then creating hydraulic models. And also special thanks to Arunas from, from Inra company. Um, he supports us uh, with software questions very much. So, Thank you and enjoy next presentations. Hello, once again, coming Marianek. Now we will speak about the future, about the future. So the case really important now in uh, protection are becoming automatic robotic racks. ISRS, it's an auto store. We are calling this auto store. And uh, they, are, uh, they are crazy and crazy dangerous. And uh, together with the FM, we just did a test in the US how we should prevent it in case of fire. And our sprinklers even big as far enough or maybe we should use it something else as a supplementary or um, for our main or with sprinklers, we can use it as a, a supplementary uh, extinguishing uh, installations. So, okay. It's a part of this presentation. Uh, to be honest, I just took from the FM Global uh, because they prepared really well uh, um, uh, presentation. And let's go 
to the um, point by point uh, to this uh, to this uh, presentation. Okay, here FM has developed via testing new data sheets for our uh, preventing uh, for our preventing auto store uh, warehouses racks. I knew that uh, uh, now we are in Poland. We are making the first on the, uh, on Earth installation according to this FM Global data sheets, as they are pretty new. They are from January. We are now making first installation for sure in Europe. I think that all over the world too. It will be close to the stretching city, uh, where we are using every component as says FM Global. So let's go. What we should have it to work it correctly. Okay, here are, we can see the different types of ISRS. So mini load, rack structure, vertically and closed ISRS. This type of these ISRS, you can find it in your investments. Here is how exactly look like this automatic store racks. As you can see, this is a Building and building. Everything what you can see is inside the warehouse. And look, these pictures. What should afraid you from the beginning? Yes, these robots, which you can see on the right, because they are working on electrical batteries. They are just taking from the ground correct, uh, uh, correct uh, uh, part and then traveling to the place when it's going out from the warehouse and it's living by a truck, this, uh, mm, this auto store. So this is the first risk of us are these electric or robotic, uh, ro electric robots with the uh, batteries. And should we afraid or not? Let's look history. Historia est magistra vita. Fire at food distribution warehouse, look, UK. It is a really fresh one. One and a half year ago it happens. In UK, not in India, not in Malaysia, not in Brazil, in UK, United Kingdom, in Europe. 2009, as you can see, warehouse was completely destroyed. It was food distribution center. Fire department report from UK. <clears throat> we can see the results, and it's really good that we can see uh, how it looks like the uh, emergency uh, action. So the first fire in UK involving a building of this nature. Ignition due to arsing in the charging process of a robot. 30 minutes from the discovery of the uh, to fire brigade's call. During this period, the sprinkler system was turned off for a period of five minutes. Fire was deep, seated, and impossible to access. All tactical options were used, including ultra high pressure lances, compressed air foam, and traditional hoses. Despite efforts of seven fire departments over four days, the building was a total loss. Four days. Total loss. So, what we have to make it, <clears throat> what we have to make it to prevent it. First, it has to be solid walled plastic container. Look like on the left. <clears throat> we need to have it ceiling sprinklers and we need to have it fixed monitor nozzle. Combine it with the our IR infrared cameras. Here we see the configuration, here we see the storage ceiling. Ignition was on the base of the storage, so the worst thing. Uh, Binath robot under one sprinkler. Sprinkler protection is we can see SFR uh, K200 uh, quick response. Nice density, almost 50 liters per minute per uh, square meter. And what was the result? <clears throat> A 
Okay, Spirit of Protect has protected a fire, but after 30 minutes, when we turn off the sprinkler, we see the fire still going out. So it means that we suppress a bit, but it wasn't extinguished. What we did later? As we can see, the smoke genera uh, generation was observed after extinguishing by sprinklers. And sprinklers turn back and on monitor nozzles use the extinguishing the fire. So once again, temperature went up really high. System started, but now in case of fire, we didn't use only the sprinklers. We also used the electrical monitors, but connected to our infrared cameras. So it means that we can find each spot half meter by half meter. If there is a fire there, we can put two monitors steam exactly in this point because camera is telling to monitors in exactly which place there is a fire. So we don't have to use oscillation all over the building or we don't need a people who will turn left, right the monitor. No, camera will identify where is the fire with let no monitors and monitors are extinguishing exactly the spot which defined earlier camera. What did we learn? Sprinklers can suppress the fire. Manual water must help extinguish the fire. Robots, obstruction, sprinkler, and water monitors. Lower ceiling can reduce the hazard. Vertical buyers stop the spread and segregate the hazard. Pre-incident planning is critical. What is changing? New guidance line. Sprinkler protection, fixed monitors, early notification, vertical bias, grid access, pre-incident planning, electrical system maintenance. Here we can see how we should protect uh, uh, in this table. We'll find information what should be the uh, 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 densities, uh, what can be the height. Uh, what kind of uh, uh, sprinklers we should use is a K160 or maybe even K140 uh, with the storage less than 6.1 meters. So we can find out everything in this table. As we know, the data sheets of FM are uh, free, so without any kind of charge or fees, you can download it and use it. Please do it. <coughs> and once again, how it looks like above 6.1 meter. Water supply. If it's always, please do remember check it's those uh, uh, two points are according to your local law, or if they are not use local law. As we see the vertical buyers, also the limits the horizontal fire spread. They should be every ninety three square meters. Here, you will use our electrical operated monitors connected together with cameras and, and same as in, a, uh, as in a high expansion presentation. We are making this for you. So it means that you will just send us the drawings, look from the top and from the uh, left or right, uh, all the, from the side, uh, that's all what we need. And then we are uh, we will uh, calculate for you the amount of the cameras and amount of the monitors and we will prepare for you all the system. What is also really important, my team will go to your um, uh, uh, to job site and they will connect all the cables 
to our equipment. They will test it. They will control it. They will make inspection. And then at the end, they will give you certificate that everything is working according to uh, producer requirements. This is a really strong paper that we are confirming as an exclusive distributor that everything is going fine. So you, you will need to only uh, prepare the cables uh, uh, lines and that's all. Also, the cables, type of the cables, we are giving you in our concept. So you shouldn't afraid that you will don't have idea what type of cables you have to use. No, this is our job. I just need the drawings from you and everything else we will design ourselves. Early notification is also important. That's why we need to use the infrared cameras instead of the uh, smoke detectors or flame detectors. Infrared cameras can observe, you know, because of the convection, always the high temperature is going up. If it's on a ground level, bottom level, there is a fire, it will went up uh, really fastly to the, uh, to the high level and we can, uh, uh, we can uh, uh, start working of our camera at only 85 degrees uh, or even 70 degrees. So unnormal temperature, we can just find it really easily and uh, start our system working really fastly before it will be even a fire. You can see how it looks like the grid access. Look how many levels, how many levels of these containers can have one automatic auto store, right? That's why it's really important to, if you will look the drawings in FM, to prepare this, uh, to prepare this auto storage racks really according to all the FM uh, points. So also the pre initial planning is really critical. So the information is uh, really important for the firefighters, what type of the installations inside. So if they knew that there are monitors inside every, every time, even if they are working automatically completely without uh, people, uh, every time uh, we can start it uh, uh, using them by, um, uh, by the panel. It's a, a radio control panel or stationary panel, which is in a controlling room. So firefighter can take the radio control panel, go exactly to the point and see from the top which place has to be extinguished at the end part of the uh, uh, action. Thank you for your attention. Everything we can make for you, all the drawings, all the concepts we are making for you, it was just only part uh, of knowledge which we are having, just to let you know that yes, there are solutions even for uh, some new type of uh, warehouse uh, storage. Uh, yes, we are ready for all the types of the fire. We are having solutions and we can make it uh, installation for you according to our concept, to our uh, knowledge. And also we can apply it with the FM standard or other, the most famous standard on the earth. So anywhere when you are having the project, please just contact us and we will help you with the concept with the drawings. You can easily then prepare it, uh, your offer for the client. Thank you for attention. Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you one very interesting person. Uh, now we are heading to uh, Denmark, but through Latvia. Karlis Lifkis is a fire safety expert who will join us for the second time on a second edition of the Baltic Fire Forum. Uh, we met him uh, two years ago. And I really liked his uh, fire safety research and invited him to our Baltic Fire Forum today as a keynote speaker. So the topic is also very interesting, is using numerical tools in predicting uh, material reaction to fire. Uh, it's a bit contradictual because uh, always... Uh, I don't remember from when, but we always said that uh, this kind of event is only by the tests. And Carlos will show us how to do it in numerical tools and CFD. So, Carlos, the stage is yours.
Hello. First of all, I would like uh, to tell you that I feel very pleased to present uh, here before you in this Baltic Fire Safety Technology Forum. It's great that the organizers have showed their initiative in this difficult time to disseminate advances in fire safety technology in Baltic region. I, I do not think that we have enough of events like this. Uh, this had been a difficult year and I believe that the organizers have gone through a lot of worries to make this happen. Uh, so I would like to express my gratitude to all the people who have been involved in arranging this event. Thanks to all the listeners as well, and I hope that uh, this event will turn out to be very interesting and fruitful. Fire safety is a very practical activity. This presentation will be uh, a, a little bit more theoretical in my view. I will try to give you uh, a brief insight to, into what is done at the universities in front of computer and laboratories in the area of fire safety technology. I believe that, uh, that solving the problems that I will address in this presentation can contribute to the fire safety and in fact to the construction market in general. This presentation will be about predicting the fire behavior of materials predicting by using numerical modeling tools. It will be about understanding the material uh, fire behavior in, in fire temperatures through empirical observations. It will be about learning about the material decomposition and the heat transfer. Furthermore, it will be about attempts to recreate this behavior mathematically. And not only recreating something already observed by, by uh, but also by creating new scenarios, new fire scenarios. I will also discuss potential practical applications for these tools. I have 16 slides in this presentation I, and I will talk for about 25 minutes. So thank you for, for your attention during this time. So the first question may be, uh, first question may be, why would you like to use modeling? Uh, modeling is a decision-making tool. It is a way to play out a possible scenario that will be a result of a, a decision that we make. And these decisions in the context of this presentation would be, should you install a certain construction in your building? Or if you're a product manufacturer, should you invest in the classification testing? Uh, there are definitely many limitations to the modeling and one might say that the modeling should only be done if physical fire testing is not possible. And I would like to suggest that physical fire testing is not possible or feasible very often. For example, it is difficult to test all the possible different fire scenarios or a wide range of potential construction designs. Also, the scale of the testing facilities limits the size of the construction that can be tested. Furthermore, there are environmental and safety aspects to the fire testing. So the modeling um, could be used to choose the relevant fire scenarios or relevant constructions to be tested. Hence, it would uh, uh, decrease the number of the tests that we need to do and maximize the value of every single fire test that, that is performed. So in this way, it would be a supplementary tool to the testing. But first of all, I would like to say a few words about myself. So my name is Karl Slivkisch. Currently, I'm working at the Danish Institute of Fire and Security Technology, where during the last seven and a half years, I have worked on various research and commercial projects. These projects often have been related to numerical modeling of fires or ad hoc testing, it means non-standardized fire testing. DBI is a competence center uh, in, in field of fire safety engineering. And, and, and DBI is involved in all kind of uh, fire related activities such as fire testing, consultancy, fire investigations, courses, research, and so on. So please visit our website uh, given in this presentation for more information. I have uh, recently completed industrial PhD education uh, and I received a, a PhD diploma earlier this year from the Lund University in Sweden. I also hold a master's degree in uh, fire safety engineering uh, from the International Erasmus Mundus Framework Program, IMFSC. This program is organized by three universities, University of Edinburgh, Ghent University and Lund University in Sweden. Nevertheless, I have started my education in, here in the Baltic region in Riga in Latvia, where I have obtained a bachelor's degree in civil engineering from Riga's Technical University.
So, what are the parameters in which we are interested in fire situations? First of all, it is the ignition. So, how fast does a material ignite under specific conditions? We are also interested in how much, uh, how much energy is created by the burning in time uh, or the heat release rate of the fire. Furthermore, we would like to understand how fast does the flame spread over different surfaces. We are also interested in how fast does the heat go through the material. This influences, the, for example, the temperature on the unexposed surface of the, uh, of the burning compartment, but also it influences the passive fire protection's ability protect, uh, to protect the construction. There are other important parameters of interest, for example, smoke movement in spaces and around the obstacles. Smoke movement simulations are nevertheless a relatively accepted tool in fire safety engineering, at least in many countries. And I will not talk about uh, uh, this in this presentation. Uh, and how would we use if we could predict these things that I mentioned before? Obviously, the main purpose is predicting realistic fire scenarios, realistic fire growth in all situations, and the thermal impact to the structures created by the fires. The better we are with modeling, with the, with the greater certainty uh, we, we can make these predictions. And due to the fast developing computational capabilities, we we will be better in modeling more and more fire scenarios with time. I think it would be fair to say that uh, at the moment we are only at the development phase for this dream to come true. But I would like you to suggest you a bit more down to earth first opportunities that are provided by numerical modeling. And it would be modeling uh, use in the product development that requires fire classification. The main groups of the uh, fire tests according to which the materials and constructions are classified are the reaction to fire tests and fire resistance tests. In these photos on the left, you can see the single burning item SBI test that is widely used for classification of the wall lining material contribution to the fire growth. The reaction to fire classes are A1 to F, with A1 having the least contribution to the fire spread and uh, F being the highest. SBI itself is used to rank uh, classes between A2 and D. The parameters that influence the reaction to fire class from the perspective of the energy release or heat release are the figure or fire growth rate and the total heat release. Other parameters in this test are related to the smoke production during the burning, uh, formation of the burning particles and the lateral flame spread. In the other group, the other group is the fire resistance tests, which classifies construction's ability to resist uh, fire growth in order to ensure compartmentation. The fire resistance must ensure that the fire stays inside the room of the fire origin and it does not spread to the other compartments. The parameters determining the class, which is measured in minutes, are the insulation, so the temperature on the uh, unexposed side of the construction, integrity, meaning that construction remains uh, whole and, and does not allow the flames or hot gases to go through it, and the construction's load-bearing capacity. The results, the obtained fire class, depends on the material properties and the conditions it is exposed to. Numerical modeling is an attempt to, uh, to separate material properties from the physical laws that govern the processes and the exposure conditions or the boundary conditions. Material properties are independent on the conditions that, that material is exposed to. And the examples of material properties are thermal conductivity, materials density, and so on. The boundary conditions describe what is happening on the exterior boundaries of the computational domain. In case of heat transfer inside the, inside the materials, it can be seen also as exposure conditions. And the, the thermal boundary conditions are uh, the following. First of all, it can be prescribed temperature on the surface of the material. Secondly, it can be prescribed heat flux to the surface. And, and uh, third, it can be prescribed radiation and convection conditions on the surface. Physical laws are governing processes uh, that are represented as mathematical equations. For example, it can be a heat conduction equation, 
or the Arrhenius law that is uh, typically used for pyrolysis modeling. The material properties and the boundary conditions are used as an input in these governing equations. Essentially, it gives an opportunity to use the same equations for different kinds of materials and different boundary conditions. It provides an opportunity of recombining the materials with exposures in any way to apply it for the same governing equations. I would like to suggest something about how we could look at the, our requirements or expectations from the predictive modeling outcomes. The first level or the highest level would be if we could predict the parameters in detail as absolute values as a function of time. Parameters like heat release rate from the burning material or the temperature on the unexposed surface of the construction. If we can do this, it would be very useful for modeling realistic fire scenarios for the building design uh, purposes or for fire incident reconstruction. We could also reconstruct the potential results of the fire tests in fine detail. It would be very nice to do so. However, it is extremely difficult, if not impossible at the moment. But we could relax a bit our expectations if we can predict, uh, for example, a group that the material or construction fits into, as often it is done in the standard testing. For example, if we could uh, Look at the, uh, if you look at the standard reaction to fire tests, we may predict either this material will be a class A, B, or C, or so on. Which class will it be? Or we can also predict the fire resistance and, and, and try to predict if the uh, proposed construction is a 30 minute or 60 minute construction, for example. So it will uh, give us a little bit more flexibility uh, regarding to the uh, errors that the modeling is uh, creating. To make it even easier, we can try to predict relative ranking of different materials uh, or material combinations without concerning um, much about the specific class of the material. Uh, and this could be used, for example, to choose which material to be tested. Depending on the situation, you might choose to test either the, uh, the best performing material or you can choose to test the worst performing material in the standard fire testing. So there are two groups of processes that can be distinguished when we think about the material behavior in fires. First of all, uh, there are gas phase processes and those are, for example, mixing of pyrolysis gases and the, and the heating of the, uh, of the fuel but from the heat transfer from the flames or heated environment. This heat, uh, this heat transfer ta uh, is, uh, takes place by the radiation and convection. The other group is condensed phase processes like the heat transfer from uh, heat transfer and heating of the fuel bed. Uh, and this heating is followed by the thermal decomposition and degradation of the material properties. The thermal decomposition will generate different gas phase products that, that will also serve as, uh, as fueling uh, the gas phase processes. So gas and solid phase processes are coupled, feeding each other. By the thermal degradation, uh, here I mean the change of material properties, like for example, the heat transfer properties or mechanical properties of the material. Referring back to the reaction to fire and fire resistance problems. In the reaction to fire problems, both gas and gas phase and condensed phase processes are, of extreme, are extremely important. In fire resistance, sometimes gas phase processes are a bit less important if the material is, for example, non-combustible, but, uh, uh, but the condensed phase processes are always important. So let us uh, look a bit more into the condensed phase processes. There are two important processes that uh, are related to the material's temperature rise. First of all, the heating of the solid and the heat redistribution inside the solid or the heat transfer. It must be noted that the material uh, properties, uh, like also including heat transfer properties, are temperature dependent, which creates one of the uh, challenges in, 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 um, in basically in obtaining these, these material properties. Secondly, uh, the thermal decomposition or chemical processes that take place inside the heated material. 
For, uh, for example, gypsum plasterboard undergoes calcination at around 100 degrees, where the chemically bound water is released from the solid matrix of the gypsum. This process requires a lot of energy. So when the gypsum is heated, it stays at the same temperature of about 80 to 120 degrees Celsius, even as uh, it is being continuously heated because of this calcination. The moisture is released from the gypsum and it travels through the pores of the gypsum outwards and further inside the material. And this further uh, influences the material temperature distribution inside the material. So the thermal decomposition is, a, is interesting both from the perspective of the energy balance and from the perspective of the mass balance. The material properties that are of the main importance in terms of the heat transfer are the thermal conductivity, specific heat capacity, and the density. There are different bench scale laboratory methods to measure these properties. For example, heat flow meter and hot disk transient plane source are only few, two examples for the thermal conductivity measurements. Specific heat capacity is a property that defines how much energy is required to increase the material's temperature one degree. It can be measured with differential scanning calorimetry. However, it is very difficult to measure these properties at elevated temperatures because materials tend to decompose if the measurement goes above a certain temperature. And uh, this creates challenges because it's difficult to interpret the, the results, that is one thing, and secondly, the, the testing equipment uh, quite often is not fit to deal with the composition products of the material. The thermal decomposition defines, uh, first of all, how many decompositions, uh, decomposition steps take place when the material is heated, what is the rate of the decomposition, and how much energy is required to undergo this decomposition. I already mentioned the example of the gypsum uh, calcination. One of, one of the most used test methods for defining the material properties from the thermal decomposition per perspective is thermogravimetric analysis. But just to let you know that even though the instruments have uh, relatively sophisticated names, the underlying principles are quite simple. So the thermogravimetric anal analysis is uh, essentially a scale or the thermogravimetric analyzer, I would say, is essentially a scale. It measure, measures the mass of the material just like a regular scale would do. But the only difference is that it measures the scale of very, very low masses in order of five milligrams. And the, the mass is measured continuously as the material is being heated. When the material properties are obtained uh, by laboratory scale methods, they are ready to be inserted into the governing equations. The equations are solved with numerical methods, like, for example, finite element, finite difference, or finite volume methods. In these figures, you can see visualization of the heat transfer model through the gypsum stone wool sandwich wall with the steel studs, which is exposed to standard fire resist resistance conditions. This is the cross section. You can see the numerical mesh in the figure on your left top. The mentioned equations are solved for each of these discrete elements that you can see in this figure. This specific example is a, a visualization, visualization from this example is created by the program COMSOL Multiphysics in this case. I have worked uh, quite a lot also with the stone wool thermal insulation. So stone wool is one of the most used insulation products that consist of mineral fibers that are held together by organic binders. These organic binders react in high temperatures and may create heat due to smoldering inside the wool. Uh, some of the work that uh, I have done was using the above mentioned methods that I, like thermogravimetric analysis or micro combustion colorimetry to quantify the energy created by the binder combustion inside the wool and resulting temperature increase. The graph on your right shows uh, the tested or measured and model temperature increase inside the stone wool in the middle of the stone wool when exposed to linearly increasing temperature conditions. So there are one uh, test measurement and two modeling um, measurements. Modeling is referred to with, with capital M and test with a capital T. 
In this slide, I have also included some uh, references for the research publications uh, dealing with heat transfer and fire resistance modeling of stone wool and gypsum. When it comes to reaction to fire testing and SBI tests that I mentioned before, DBI, uh, the company where I'm working at the moment, has set a, a new project to investigate the modeling capabilities of uh, program fire dynamics simulator when it comes to modeling SBI tests. So again, we have used the same above mentioned material characterization test methods and performance sim perform simulation with fire dynamics simulator, uh, FDS. FDS probably is the most widely used numerical tool in fire safety engineering, and it's mostly used for smoke movement simulations. It nevertheless has the ability also to compute the heat transfer inside the material, pyro pyrolysis, and, uh, and, uh, and fire growth, which, and flame spread, which is a result of these processes. We have compared our predictions with a set of experimental data th uh, that we uh, produced especially for this project. Uh, we tested uh, materials like particle board, medium density fiber board, gypsum boards, and we also painted these, these boards with different paints. So in this graph, you can see an example of the, the particle board test and compared with the, uh, with the simulation results from program fire dynamics simulator. This graph shows the heat release rate uh, in kilowatts versus time. And the simula simulation results are with, uh, with the blue line and the uh, test results are, there are two repeated tests with the green and orange. And again, there are some references on, on other work by other researchers done on this topic. But really, uh, to go a little bit more down to earth, I must mention that there are many processes that are difficult, if not impossible, to, mom to model at the moment. These include things like cracking of materials, like for example, gypsum, or, or crack formation in charred wood. Secondly, melting and melt flow sometimes occurs, and that is very difficult to model as well. It is also difficult to define how to model the gas movement through the pores and cracks to, due to diffusion. And the main problem here is uh, characterizing the materials. In gas phase, resolving the time and length scales of the combustion process are extremely challenging. In fire resistance, uh, there is a problem about how the construction deforms. And as they deform, sometimes they allow for the hot gases to go around the construction and heat up the construction's unexposed surface and by that means. Not even to mention the uncertainties in real building materials like uh, homogeneity of the materials and, and different differences between uh, different project, project batches. There are some changes on the constructions expected as well if the tested construction is built uh, manually. Hence, the modeling relies also on uh, fitting the data, empirical coefficients or intentionally adjusted input parameter values in order to cover for these modeling insufficiencies at the moment. It is something that requires understanding and experience of the processes taking place during the testing. And so the modeler should have at least some fire testing experience. Uh, here again, uh, I would like to remind about the three levels of the of our expectations or the three levels of modeling purpose that we could have. So we could aim uh, having absolute values uh, in, in large detail, but also we can uh, relax a little bit our expectations if we want to, to predict the group of the, that material fits into or, or ranking of the material combination. I would like, however, also to mention the attempts for developing, development of more general and detailed models that would not rely so much on the empirical fitting of the parameters, of the input parameters. An excellent example is work done by IAFSS working group on measurement and computation of fire phenomena. They are organizing an international research initiative on modeling fires with contributions from the research institutes all around the world. There are two subgroups working in this initiative, condensed phase group and the gas phase group. In these groups, the state of the art modeling and material characterization practices are shared 
and discussed. Please visit the website uh, as given here in this slide for more information about this project. Few things that I want you to pick up from this presentation are, so the first of all, that there are people who are working on the attempts of predicting material fire behavior in terms of the heat transfer and in terms of fire growth. This work is in continuous development. Secondly, model, modeling is a decision-making tool and it should be in the toolbox, uh, toolbox of every fire safety engineer. For now, it, it perhaps should not have the top priority when making decision, but it can serve as one of the pieces of evidence when you need to make a decision. And sometimes this piece of evidence can be quite strong. I would like to remind you that there are, are several levels of expectations that we can have. And even if we cannot predict the fire growth in fine detail yet, this tool can be still used if we expect to predict the group or the ranking of the materials. In the future, nevertheless, I hope and believe that we will be able to use these tools to determine realistic fire growth in, in, uh, in, in, in rooms and in, in buildings and, and the fire impact to the structures. Here, I would like to, uh, to say thank you for your time. My email is written on this slide, so please feel free to contact me if you would like to discuss anything I have talked about in this presentation or anything else related to fire safety technology. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'd like to talk about fire risk assessment. This is uh, quite a new thing in, in Lithuania, at least, and I've heard in uh, Latvia also which gives a uh, business the opportunity to perform government's services. Well, basically now what we have is that uh, National Fire Department has kind of a prevention squad, which takes uh, the control of uh, fire safety inside the premises of fabrics, manufacturers, uh, logistics, and so on and so on. Fire risk assessment is also kind of a tool which makes fire safety audit in another way, but still is uh, less used in, in common. Poland is already the country where fire risk assessment, uh, especially in the insurance companies, is a very common thing. First of all, in evaluating the risk factors. And it's not only the thing that you evaluate only the area and the function of some production unit. Uh, this means of actually going into the factory or the logistics center and trying to see all the risk factors. So may I introduce you the PZU insurance company fire risk assessment specialist, Eva Krajnik Zhuk. I'm really honored uh, and looking forward to hear from you. So Eva. The floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. It is a big pleasure for me to meet with you during this Baltic Fire Forum. It is quite different. Uh, different and difficult to me to, uh, to speak and to tell you about the, my presentation, but I will try, even now it's from my kitchen, but let's start. It's, uh, the, the subject of the presentations is, uh, my, is connected with my job uh, because I work in insurance, but from my background, I'm a fire safety engineer. So uh, I would like to tell you what we are doing uh, when we would like to cover with the insurance the property uh, risk. Okay, let's start. It is always a customer's decision what to ensure and, and what, what on what conditions. In the industrial area, we, we have some different risks and different possibilities to ensure. First of all, we ensure the property damage but it's very often uh, used also business interruption, machinery breakdown, and machinery loss of profit. So I would like uh, on 
that, uh, that there are slides to tell you and to show you what we do and what can be also useful for you uh, during uh, insuring the uh, properties. First, uh, the most, imp uh, the most uh, useful and most important thing is property damage. Uh, usually, customers want to insure all risk, what uh, is included is as uh, during the, the according to the definitions, there are all risks, but especially uh, in uh, industrial areas, we are thinking about the fires, the explosion, the floods. <sighs> On the picture, you can see the very uh, very bad situation, big disasters. Always, we would like to prevent such situations, and we would want to help to help the customer, the client, to, to protect fr from such situation. What is also important, there's uh, another kind of uh, insurance, there's a uh, uh, business interaction, because after the disaster, there's one thing, we, we, we lose the, the, the property, we lose the machinery, but we, we are not able to continue our business. So our task is not is to help the clients to, uh, to, to work after even something is bad happens. So there's a kind of uh, insurance which is known as a business interruption. And we, we don't know um, how, how long does it take to start the production from the beginning to, 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 to continue the business? We would like we wouldn't like to uh, put the, such uh, picture like on this slide like sorry we're closed. We would like to help the customer. We would like to help to with the business. Sometimes it can take a few days, but sometimes it. It is. Uh, it also happens uh, that uh, that it, uh, it is all uh, closed for always. So my, uh, my, uh, my recommendation is uh, is, uh, is uh, to to think about also about the business interruption, not only the property uh, loss, but also business interruption because sometimes it's more difficult for the customer. Okay, we are only not only thinking about the fires, the explosions, or the uh, of the uh, floods or any other disasters. We are also thinking about the machinery breakdown because uh, in industrial area it's not possible to 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 work without uh, machinery. So about the production lines. It happens that it's uh, even a standard situation that sometimes something is going to break down. Small failure can cause big effect on production and stop the production. For example, in a, we have if if we have only the one line and there's a, a big problem to, for example, to have spare uh, spare parts, not uh, not. Uh, not each customer has it uh, has own storage of spare uh, parts, so uh, it is also very good and I think even useful to have uh, this uh, kind of insurance like machinery breakdown, which is also connected. I will show you on an, another uh, on the next slide, which is um, machinery breakdown and loss uh, of profit, uh, and we. And we would like to also recommend you to uh, to, make, to take uh, into uh, um, account this kind of uh, protection. What uh, what the, what the risk? Uh, what we have to what we would like to assess the risk and what we can help. What we are doing. I would try to uh, tell you in a few words. First, we have a customer, we have broker and agent, depending on situation, and we have insurance. And we are trying to find the solutions. Sometimes quite difficult because uh, 
I understand uh, not only I, but uh, we, the insurers, understand that the customer is very good at his task, at his job, and know uh, the customer knows uh, how uh, it should, uh, how things should be pr- produced and what is required for produce. But when with the insurance, we are coming from from uh, other risk. We, we've seen uh, a lot of other companies and we are looking at other uh, things. For example, we are trying to uh, have a general view for the risk. We are thinking about the situation of the fire, of the possible hazards, which are not maybe uh, very... Um, very often, uh, very often uh, uh, thought by the client as uh, uh, difficult, but the, they, they treat the, the, the things as standards. So we, we are trying to discuss and tell and show the possible uh, hazards. Okay. Uh, what is... Uh, what happens during the service? I will try to uh, tell you some uh, some specific information. So during service, uh, customers uh, uh, areas plans. We have engineers from insurance companies. We have bro- brokers or agents, and we need. And it's very important to have clients representatives, but not one person uh, as an owner. Okay, sometimes it happens, it's okay, it's, and we are very happy that we can meet with the owner, but it is good if it's possible to meet with uh, the people responsible for building, uh, for media, for technical maintenance. It is very important because uh, we we have specific uh, general, not only general uh, question, but we have specific questions. To, uh, it is important for us to... Uh, Assure to, to uh, think about the possible hazards and the possible uh, scenario of the of situations which can ha- which can happen uh, at uh, plant. So, uh, what I can I recommend you it to it's to invite as much people as possible. Maybe not all people for one hour and to spend uh, one uh, one day with the insurance, but it is good to prepare the schedule, to prepare people from different areas, and uh, we would like to uh, ask for different things which can be uh, useful during uh, making the risk assessment. Sometimes it happens that, that uh, people are very good prepared. Sometimes uh, some uh, somebody is on a vacation, so there is someone else. But uh, please. Uh, Try to uh, try to be prepared for different questions because it's very useful. Okay, we are thinking about the industry, but it's a very very high, uh, uh, very very uh, difficult area because. Usually, we are making uh, assessment. We are uh, doing the service in food industry, automotive, wood, waste, mining, uh, printing, packaging, or chemistry. Each of this industry has uh, different requirements, which are not only due to uh, low requirements, because. Uh, we as uh, as all insurers, not only my company, it's all insurers. Uh, we are we have requ- uh, requirements based on uh, loss uh, history, uh, loss uh, damages history. Uh, we are trying to giving our requirements. For example, for wood uh, industry, we we always uh, are looking for the spark detection for the fi- fire alarm. On the food industry, it is very important because the construction of plenty of buildings are from flammable uh, parts. We are we know that the sandwich panels are very useful because of the temperature of the other aspects. It is useful for, for example, because the uh, dura- uh, the duration of the building process is short but uh, the technical 
from the technical point of view and from the fire loss, uh, it is not a very good idea to use these sandwich panels. So I'm try to I will try to in another slides to show you some the most important things. But you know uh, here we are only to tell you the general point of view. If you would like to ask, you are always uh, we are open to tell you, and we are open to uh, to meet uh, with you and uh, show and present the specific requirements. Okay, from the next slide. Uh, I I will I will present the most important things for preparing uh, during service. First of all, there are documents. Uh, it is very nice if it's possible to present these documents before the service. And we, as engineers, uh, risk engineers, we have possibility to uh, to read this to uh, to prepare. But if not possible, okay, we are doing this during service, but we need all building documents with the, especially with the construction uh, description and the process description, because we are trying to know all the processes, but it's quite difficult to know everything. It's nobody is possible, uh, is able to, to know everything about each uh, process. Okay, what is also important, as I told you before, we we like when we have representatives of area of all areas of the plan, like process, uh, people responsible for process, for maintenance, for fire protection. Uh, the next uh, important things is uh, maintenance reports. Well, for example, fire installation or fire detection, fire sprinklers, the gas detection, and media, especially energy, uh, energy, gas, uh, ventilation. And uh, after this uh, document part of the service, we are going to uh, we are going to have a tour. And so uh, it is nice when we have uh, people from the plant which are which know where everything is or if they are not possible to to tell us it is good to to, to always to uh, attach the information later or better is to give the information later than uh, giving no information so even uh, even though if you are not prepared with the documents after the service we are uh, trying to to, to tell to, to 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 sit and discuss what should be uh, attached because when the risk uh, risk engineer does not have the information is is uh, the the situation is not good for the customer because it's not possible to uh, analyze all risks uh, aspects and the the general. Um, marked uh, the general uh, view of the risk is not so good uh, as it could be so my uh, my uh, how to say maybe the recommendation but uh, i recommend i try to uh, tell you that it's good to prepare as much information as you can and give the give it to the to your insurer because it's better for you it's better for uh, giving you the general uh, risk uh, assessment. Okay, and, and now some important things about the um, about the risk uh, hazards and the things which uh, the risk uh, engineers are looking for. First of all, is of course construction. Usually we are looking there in the sandwich the sandwich panels and what is inside. What what there is this, the most important things is the wool inside or is the, uh, polyurethane or another thing. So we need what is inside. Of course, so, uh, we, we are looking is the concrete or any other or wood uh, inside. Next things which is uh, very important there is uh, fire divisions of technical rooms, especially. The, it is uh, air compressed. Uh, ener uh, the, there's uh, energy room, 
or technical rooms, it is good when they are fully divided. You know, according to law, uh, it's uh, uh, it is uh, it should be divided. But when you have the older plan, or when you uh, have uh, rebuilt or something has changed, sometimes it happens, but maybe not some. But very often it happens that uh, these rooms are not fire divided. So uh, it is the one of the things uh, which are which is checks. Uh, another very important aspect is loading of forklifts, because uh, the place uh, it is uh, this place um, allows uh, some fire and explosion detection. What we are looking for and we are checking is hydrogen detection. One uh, of the next uh, things is fire detection, spark detection. The fire detection is very important because of the uh, the time of working of the plants. Some uh, some plants are working twenty four hours, seven days. Okay, so we we always have people inside, but uh, many of plants are working from Monday to Friday or Saturday, and after then the this close and sometimes uh, it is have own security or it is only alarm and there is nobody inside. So the recommendation is to is to use fire detection. Depending, of course, of the value of the plants, but it's very important the fire sprinkler installation. What, what we have uh, inside it is uh, fire sprinkler installation. Depending of the industry, and, and for example, when we have storaging, uh, it depending on the high, high of the storage. Another situation, uh, another also very important things is. Um, it, uh, it is uh, in Polish law, it is not required, but I know some European uh, laws it is required, the building laws required, the thermal service of electric acid installation. Now, uh, especially in uh, buildings with flammable construction, the thermal service of uh, installation is required. So. And uh, it happens, it can be done by professional company or it can be done by uh, people from electricians, from the uh, customers' um, company. What is important, it is preparing the reports because sometimes it happens that the customer says that I have uh, my own camera and I'm doing the test. Okay, it's very important and we uh, admire this, but... Uh, the best thing is uh, even if you are doing uh, on its own uh, uh, possibilities, it's to prepare the report because when we are doing the next uh, um, surveys, we need we we are able to compare with the uh, with the last uh, um, survey. Okay. And I think that the time uh, of the presentation is going to be finished. And I hope that uh, you, after this few slides, uh, you are able to see what we are looking uh, during the uh, surveys, because, uh, you know, uh, we have um, fire and building uh, requirements from the law, but uh, the insurance have their own uh, experience, experience based on of loss, on the loss ratio, and to always, maybe not always, but it's very often that we have more uh, difficult, maybe different uh, requirements than low. So my uh, my recommendation is to always ask your insurer to to, to the uh, to ask for the requirements, especially when you are going to build new plant or to build new uh, new part of the plant. If you it's always uh, free and you can ask uh, the insurer what uh, of uh, what kind of requirements uh, you uh, you have. My um, I like uh, this uh, this part of my job because it's all, always uh, easier after that. Because sometimes it happens that I'm going for new plan uh, to, uh, for new plan survey, and it happens that uh, it could be something could be done before and now after the 
after the finishing the installation or the the uh, after the finishing uh, it's not possible to do uh, because something is the some of the stage is closed so please uh, please uh, talk please write or please meet with your insurer and ask what what they want uh, for your specific area Thank you very much for your uh, attendance and I hope that uh, you will meet, uh, maybe we'll meet uh, in another situation. And now I would like to say thank you and see you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you the company Victaulix. Uh, why am I very happy about this company and its support for our expert team is that Victaulix was always for me the most innovative, lead, uh, showing the leadership in uh, sprinkler production and uh, showing us new innovations, such innovations uh, that were afterwards followed by the other competitor companies. Flexible connection joints for sprinklers or fire hoses for, for sprinklers or in other words, fire drops are very common and this, uh, this gives our architects or engineering uh, designers much more flexibility while designing the sprinkler systems. It is very much important uh, to, to follow the, the basic rules which will be presented by uh, the expert Daniel Larson. And uh, I'm really happy to, to talk about uh, fire extinguishing because uh, despite the smoke, uh, smoke detection, fire extinguishing is also one of the main uh, systems which, which are obliged to react as fast as possible and to limit the flames and, and the fire. So, Mr. Daniel, uh, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. This is Daniel from Norway, and I'm working as a fire protection engineer here in the Nor Norwegian market. I'm going to help my new colleague here today to have a presentation for the Baltic Fire Forum. And we're going to talk about flexible hoses in the sprinkler system. Then we're going to look on some new things Victolic are coming with to the sprinkler market next year. So we'll just fire away. So the first slide is going to explain the different part of a flexible hose and the bracket itself. So when we look on the different components, we're going to have it. The hose itself, we're going to have the adapter that we connect to the branch line. We will have the reducer where we connect the sprinkler. And we will have the bracket itself where we connect, um, where we connect the um, reducer and the hose to. And the sprinklers. So all this is a system itself and approved as well. So when we look on the bracket the reducer, the adapter and the hose has to be from the same manufacturer. So you can't switch around when it comes to hoser from different manufacturers. So if you're going to do an approved installation, you need the bracket, the reducer and the hose and the adapter. That's an approved system. The only thing you can use from another man manufacturer is the sprinkler itself. Otherwise, everything has to be from the same manufacturer when it comes to approval. And that's, um, that's the rule for everyone in the sprinkler business. So when we look on the next slide, we'll see different type of hoses in the, in the fire protection industry. We have one type of hose, which is helical, helical corrugation, a braided one or an unbraided. And if you Google this, you will see more or less it's a continuous spiral or screw thread with low flexibility and high strength. And mainly it's used in places where, it, where high strength and medium to high pressure is needed. And the other type of flexible hose we have in the market is analog corrugation, braided one. 
It's that series of complete rings which stretches between each other and comes with high flexibility and small rigidity and withstands normal, uh, normal pressure and use where flexibility is needed. For example, in a sprinkler system when we connect it to the branch line. So not all flexible are flexibles. And the difference between what we just mentioned is when we come to the different type of corrugation, you either have helical or you have annular. When we see on the different type of hoses, you will have a minimum bend radius, a maximum number of bends you can do on the hose, and what type of hydraulic you will get from the hose. So the picture I'm showing over there in the presentation, you will find that kind of picture in every submittal from every, every manufacturer. So that's a standard how we measure, measure the bend radius on the hose. So when we look on bend radius, you're gonna find a lot of different bend radius depending on, on which manufacturer you use or what type of hose or style you're using in your project. So here we have a picture from Victaulic Submittal on the different type of hoses we have available. The only hoses we have available here in Europe if, is the bend radius with 51 millimeters and, six, and 76 millimeters as well. But we have um, different type of hoses around the world where we see much more bend rates on the hose as well. And this is extremely important to follow because we will go through it, you will see why you have to follow the bend radius as well. So when we look on bend radius, and more or less every, every submittal will uh, state that you have a minimum bend radius of one bend. When it comes to two bends, you're gonna multiply that number to get the bend radius you're supposed to install the hose. So if you see on the left hand side, you will see the H2 from Vitalik that has a 51 millimeters bend radius. So if we're gonna do two bends, we have to consider that we have to have a longer center to center on the hose to keep the um, bend radius and have the installation approved. And this can be kind of challenging now when we're in, we have tighter and tighter concealed spaces and where we're gonna install a hose. When we look on the right-hand side, you have H5 from Victaulic, and that has a lot of more bend radius and you have to consider this as well. So now I see it's kind of hard to see on the picture, but there you see it's 102 millimeters. So we're gonna have two bends we have to have 204 millimeters bend radius center to center. So this is something you have to consider when you're designing or when you're installing the hose that you have the bend radius that the manufacturer states in the submittal for you. So you will have a lot of different hoses out there and you will see we just mentioned you have braided hoses and you have unbraided hoses. Something to take care of or have in mind is that for a corrugated unbraided hose to have an FM approval on it, it has to ha have a braid. So if you have a corrugated unbraided hose and you put a braid on it, you will get the FM approval. Otherwise, FM will not approve the hose. But what you have to have in mind that these kind of hoses will difference in price as well. But the data will, will be the, exactly the same data. You will have the amount of bend and the amount of bend radius as well. But you're more or less just paying more to have the braided, mm, the braided socket above the hose to, to get the FM approval. So keep this in mind because maybe it's not unnecessary to buy braided hose all the time because it's going to be hard to see if you maybe break the hose or not. So when we're doing the bend radius, the amount of bends we're doing the hose, this will give us hydraulics to our hose and what we put in, in our, to our design to get the right water pressure to our sprinkler head. So for example, if you see on um, the shortest hose, 790 millimeters, and if we do one bend, you will get 
three point or two point six meters of um, down pressure or equivalent length you will add to your program when you're designing it. So this is so important when we're installing flexible holes into the system is because if we do more bend than we're supposed to do or not keeping the bend radius we will have the designer will have a tough job to know the right amount of water and pressure so the sprinkler head can work as it's intended to be so when we look on the h5 from vitalik with helical corrugation with no braided on you will see the different kind of numbers this kind of holes are producing so if we take the short one on uh, seven seven hundred millimeters the orange letters are representing the h2 we just went through so if we take the shortest one it will give you a uh, 5.2 meters of equal length length on four bands so oftentimes we're using analog design or analog helical you will get a lot a lot of more um uh, less pressure drop in the system and it's going to be a benefit for you when you were designing this system as well because you will get a lot of pressure and you have to add more pressure into the system as these are more pressure loss in the um, hoses so as i was mentioning you you just saw as well that victolic ha have had this h5 helical helical corrugated hose in the market but we decided here in europe that we're not going to continue sell this because we did see so much problems with installation out there on the market and so this is installation picture from our hose our installation and we couldn't accept this and bring it to the markets so that's why we're using honor or design all the time now when we're selling in the europe european market And here as well, you see, and just imagine now if we had a braided uh, socket on, on this hose, we're not able to see this kind of kinks and when we're destroying the sprinkler system. So this gonna jeopardize the whole integrity of the sprinkler system. And when sapphires appear, the sprinkler head is not gonna get enough of water to the designed attempt or yeah we're going to lose a lot of pressure if the hose is going to see like look like this during installation and when the installation is completed so keep in mind follow the bend radius we can't kink them because it's going to be um, it's uh, we're going to jeopardize and jeopardize the integrity of the full sprinkler system So why do we use flexible sprinkler drops, uh, drops in the sprinkler system? Oftentimes, especially here in Norway, I see reduced labor costs. We save a lot of time when we do installations. We're gonna have less leakage points in the system as well. We're gonna allow for um, sealing lid movement over time, as you can see in the left picture. And maybe if you walked around in all the buildings and if you see some sprinklers, oftentimes you can see the sprinkler heads have gone up in the roof and you just see the plate um, uh, ab um, below the ceiling and this is because we have a hard pipe coming down through the roof and over time when the roof is settled you will have the sprinkler pop up with flexibles you will um, get away from that problem the flexible will always go off to the ceiling and it will work properly when it's been activated and it's also remodel friendly especially when we see for example an office building you have a new a new company that's going to hire in the office building and they want to remodel it's easy with flexible hoses to take it from here and place it over there um, instead so that's a big benefit as well and for the corrosion pop as well and you just see here on the picture that you will save a lot of leakage points if you use flexible hoses so what are vitalic bringing to the market 
So what I was mentioning when Victolic only offer here in Europe in the European market the analog corrugation. We have two kind of hoses or three as you see here H1, H3 and H2. These are both analog corrugation and uh, something we in Victolic are using is kink resistance. So if you see the picture in the middle there you will have a more or less a coke can and this is just smushed together. And this is something the analog corrugation will not allow. So every hose from the toilet is kink resistant. So I can bend the hose like this and pull it and try to destroy it, but it will no, never happen. So it's a high quality hose, which will not kink during installation. And on, on below in the presentation, you will see the minimum bend rate is depending on which approval you're using. Here is a, see some kind of installation from Vitalik as well on the H2 this time. And as you can see here, they're just bending the hose before the pressure test. They're waiting for the sealing to be completed. When the ceiling comes um, in place, they will just take the hose and bend it down to and place it um, correctly in the right bracket. So this is one benefit of using uh, Anilar and Victolic as well on the flexible hoses is that you can install the hoses, you can do pressure tests, and when the ceiling is installed and completed, you can take the hose and place it in the right place. So the brackets. So uh, as I was mentioning in the beginning, you will have every bracket and holes will be tested and approved accordingly. So you can't mix these together as we went through in the beginning. So when we look on UL, the UL standard, standard 2443, they have a big test what they're doing on flexible hoses and brackets and on the right side hand side or the right picture you will see they will put 17 newton on the sprinkler reducer and press it um, in the wrong direction to try to move the bracket in place so they will test this the sprinkler brackets for and as you can see the screw method is a very popular method to um, tighten these brackets and that it will stay in place as well. So keep in mind when you're installing brackets, you have to install them um, after the manufacturing installation because we all have an approval that you're supposed to follow. So the full installation is approved as well. And especially when it comes to brackets and then what I know is here in the Norwegian market, we oftentimes sheets I couldn't say maybe it's a bad installation, but oftentimes we see they're using the bracket in the wrong way. They're tightening it, it's fully rigid, but because we haven't tested the bracket in that way and we don't have the approval on how you have installed the bracket, we can't approve the installation. So it's really, really important when it comes to hoses and brackets that you follow the manufacturer installation um, manual that you will have approved approved installation afterwards when you're done. So, when it comes to hard lead ceilings, and where are we using ho hoses? So, most of the times we're using flexible drops when it comes to um, just normal ceilings, just um, easy ceilings. But when it comes to hard lead ceilings, oftentimes you're, we're using hard, hard piping down to it. Victolic has um, come up with several brackets to cover this kind of application in more and more uh, challenging uh, designing um, buildings. And Victolic is trying to keep up with all the different kind of ceilings that av is available on the market. So some of these brackets, we have AB2, AB4, AB12, we'll see in some different picture. But if you see on the left-hand side or the left picture, we have placed the adjust, adjustment screw underneath. So if you install in a hard lid, 
you will easily have access afterwards the ceiling is being installed that can that you can adjust the sprinkler head or a nipple in the right height that you're going to install so for example if we use the um, the picture in the right hand, hand corner we will have a difficult time to adjust the sprinkler when we have a wing nut on the sprinkler head or the sprinkler reducer so that's why we place a screw underneath when it comes to hard lead ceilings that we can adjust afterwards so yeah this is an installation video i don't know if it's gonna show yeah, it's, showing, it's no sound in this as well. So here you will see the AB2 from Victolix being installed. Just a quick and easy movie. He tightened the screw into the ceiling grid. He's placing, placing in it in center. He will take the hose. And Victolix has the benefit of a center bracket that will just open up click on tighten the screw and the installation is completed so not not rockets not rocket science we're doing here but keep in mind do the installation correct and you will be fine So this is the type of different brackets Victolic is, is offering to the market. We will have AB1, AB2, AB3, and up until AB12. And we'll see on the next slide, we'll see some different kinds of um, brackets we have available. So keep this in mind. We, you will get my contact or my uh, colleagues' contact information in the end of this video. So you can contact and see what type of brackets you should need for different type of applications. So we have different kind of um, brackets for different kind of needs. And here you will see some of the innovation Victolix are doing through the market. You will have AB12, which is a um, threaded rod. You're just placing up to the head. You pull it down and you um, connect the sprinkle bracket or you will have abba abmm bracket that's a multiple brackets as well what you can use it for more or less everything ab11 is a short installation so if you have a, a small places you can use ab11 instead a, abl instead so this is what victolic is promoting to the market instead of having all this hard piping everywhere where we have to measure every pipe we can't prefab anything we're trying to move away from that and move over to flexible brackets in their designated area where you will use different kind of brackets to accommodate different kind of application so this is the idea we're trying to have in the market and uh, just save labor time save time on the job site that's the key so maybe in some pictures so now that vitalik has um a coupling on the hose so vitalik has and um, for one year ago we newly came with a new igs system which which is a one inch system where we can groove so we can groove all the dimension and with this kind of system, we have allowed to have, for example, sprinkler heads with couplings on. And here you ha have um, sprinkler hoses with coupling on, which just makes the installation easier and you will have less leakage points as well with the visual inspection. So this was, uh, that was for the flexible market, just an easy overview. You see, the, I think the the main point you should, should take from this that you, you have different kind of hoses you have a helical you have an analog corrugation you have to keep in mind what bend radius you're going to use on the hose and how many bends can i use on the hose and which bracket should i use and what kind 
and how do I install, install the bracket correctly. And that's going to help you in your project and when you're designing as well to pick the correct um, uh, flexible drop for your application. So I was um, going to just show you some news Victolica came with. This um, picture you see here is the 009 um, coupling, which is a couple of years old. And this is an installation ready coupling. Just put on the pipe, tighten it metal to metal, have no torque requirements, and you will have a visual inspection of the afterwards when you completed the installation. So I think on the next slide you will see not. So here you see every coupling comes pre-assembled and it's just take out from the box on the pipe, tighten it, and you will have a complete installation. Of course, you have to have the groove in mind. So when I talk bolt pad to bolt pad or visual inspection, this is what it means. It means that the foreman in the project or the project manager, for example, when you're using hide labor or your own labor, it's very easy to go in the floor in the project, look on the coupling itself and see if you have a metal to metal bolt pad to bolt pad to have the correct installation and a visual inspection as well. And here we have some customers here in Norway which have used this visual inspection where they're using their own paint just to mark the coupling that they have installed the coupling correctly. So the news of the news. So where, what I'm saying here, the originator of the one bolt installation where the coupling. Victoria came with this coupling and came with this coupling one year ago. We just taking this to Europe in the next year, we're bringing this to the market. The 09 coupling I just showed you, this is the exact same coupling, just that we tighten one end and we have bolt pad to bolt pad um, uh, inspection on just one side. So we have visual inspection on just one side of the coupling. And here you see it. So we have from one inch the IGS system I just mentioned uh, briefly and you will have soon next year in the beginning of next year here in europe you will have the 109 coupling uh, for the bigger dimension and for the ogs groove as well so you will have a visual inspection the the full package package of visual inspection and this coupling or the 009 this 109 coupling no one requires a torque measurement so the only thing you have to achieve is metal, metal to contact, bolt, bolt pad to bolt pad. You have a visual inspection, then you know the coupling is installed right, and you can trust the joint that you have um, done everything correctly. And that was uh, all for me. So as I was just started with, I'm Daniel from Norway, been in Victolic for three years as a sales engineer for fire protection. And you see here my calling for the Baltics. Please contact Viras if you have any question or if you have anything in mind when it comes to Victolic and our solution. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back from the lunch. And we are proceeding our second day of Baltic Fire Forum. Now, not alone, I'm led with my colleague, Edvardas. Thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you for inviting. <laughs> and let's get to work. So, uh, a new innovative topic, uh, battery safety. Uh, well, lots of uh, news about burning Teslas, uh, burning electric motorcycles, even bicycles, not mentioning even, uh, you know, uh, telephone cells, which just get on fire while charging. And no one knows about actually how to legislate all these things. Is it, is it our future or how do you think? What about the legislation? Do you see a future in that? Uh, of course, it's our future because uh, uh, batteries are coming in our life more and more and uh, uh, one of them are really powerful and uh, uh, need a lot of electricity supplying uh, for recharging. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and uh, it's about the cars and uh, others, uh, other equipment like telephones and and so on um, are less, uh, let's say, uh, less amount of uh, of electricity, but uh, still it's quite dangerous mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, national regulation, uh, in my opinion, at the present is not. Uh, um, it's not too early, probably. Too, too early, uh, yes. It's uh, they they not they are not uh, discovered such as statistic and such as uh, problematic uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so sharp and and uh, that's because uh, they they didn't have any uh, changes in 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 the regulations. Well, this is basically. Uh under the statistics, if there are no fires, probably no one's thinking about the regulation of it. But how do you find this uh, threat uh, of, uh, you know, charging the electric cars in underground garages? That's quite a common thing, you know. Yes, of course. And uh, uh, as we have discussion uh, before, mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, uh, national regulation and even international regulation. Uh, they didn't uh, uh, ready with uh, with with the issues mm -hmm. uh, uh, of, of such as technological process, uh, which are uh, put it uh, now in in the car parking. So uh, uh, let's compare two different situations with a uh, uh, gas uh, in a in a yeah. in a. Uh, uh, car parks uh, and uh, and petrol or diesel mm. uh, it's not allowed to to go on underground uh, to true. go to the yeah. underground level and it's uh, uh, restricted uh, by by regulations but mm -hmm. nothing about uh, electrical uh, batteries and not yet not yet. not yet yes and and uh, the level of uh, of uh, such as uh, equipment uh, it's uh, of uh, um, let's say uh, how um, how dangerous is it? Uh, we don't we don't understand uh, yeah, we do. at at the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, so I think this topic will be clarified by our friend Frederick Tschuske from uh, SVT Branches, and he will clarify all those issues, telling us the story and the details about battery fire safety. Frederick, the stage is yours. Hello, my name is Frederik Tschuske and um, I'm very pleased to um, tell you a little bit more about the topic of uh, battery safety. Um, there are, it's an important topic, I guess. So, a short introduction um, from my side. Yes, yeah, so I'm 33 years old. I'm the product manager of SVT products in the area of um, passive fire protection in battery safety. Um, I prepare a small presentation for you to give you an insight what being in the, in the area of passive fire protection for battery safeties and also give you a short introduction. So the agenda for today is, as I already told you, a short introduction of SVT products, who we are, what we are doing, um, the risk of batteries, the products and solutions that we have at SVT products, and um, our R&D and testing solutions for this, this kind of topic. Who, who we are? We are SVT is um, the, the market leader in, in Germany since 1969 in the area of passive fire protection. So we are, um, had an anniversary of 50 years last year. Normally we came from the construction side um, for fire protection. But we also have uh, business units in the uh, industrial sector. Um, I will show you later on. Just a, a small overview, just a few facts and figures. So founding year, as I told you, um, was 1969. Um, staff size are already over 800. Turnover is about 180 million a year. We are, have, have locations, uh, over 30 locations in Germany and four production sites. The scope of activities, as I already told you, we are the passive uh, structural fire protection in, in construction area, but we also have um, fire protection for industrial application like, like I do, and um, the area of damage um, re restoration. So now here are the, the 
partners from us and um, yeah, our headquarters is in, in Hamburg, Germany. Um, also, as I told you, our four production sites are all in Germany. We got a partner in, in SVT in, in Poland, also in Turkey, Russia. Um, we got a um, office in, in the Middle East and Asia Pacific. And we have over 50 uh, representatives in, in all, all over the world. Here are our market segments in the industrial sector. So as I told you, um, we have the construction area, um, the energy, rolling stock and aviation. That's my part as uh, the battery safety part. So I'm the, the product manager of these three topics. But we have also the ships and offshore renewable energies and uh, special requirements. So we got a whole bunch of business units for the industrial sector. Should I start with um, the, the topic of battery safety? So here's a small overview what what we are doing and in which kind of topics we are um, have some products and some solutions for, for the area of battery safety, as you can see below. Um, we focus here on the on the production, on the transport, and the, the storage of the batteries. But the most important thing is the the e mobility, so the the field of using in a maybe in a car, electric car, and also the recycling of the um, damaged batteries is, is also an important topic because you have to bring the battery from from the case of fires to the um, recycling. The products that we use, we have some some different kind of products. So we have the coatings, we have some some molded parts, some PU based materials, a lot of fabrics, um, fire stop boards, composite material, filler ceilings, and some special solutions. But later on, I will tell you a little bit more about our product and solutions. Um, right now, I want to start with the risk of batteries. So. As you can see the pictures, everyone knows the, the risk of batteries. So there are <coughs> the, the Tesla, that's the, the most famous picture, I guess. But you can see some, yeah, some, some battery cells um, that reacts and um, you have the, the most risks um, is a cell failure. failure. Um, you got thermal runaway. When you got the thermal runaway, you get the propagation of the cells. And this is happening because of a cell failure, um, overloading or overheating from the battery system. Yeah, the formation products and thermal runaway. What, what, what happens when a, when a thermal runaway in the battery cell uh, is happening? So we got all kinds of happenings. We got the gas and the pressure, we got the heat, we got the particles, and we got the, the acids. Our products can, can be successful in three types from these four. We can use the gas and pressure, we can the heat, the particles, but what we can't, sorry, but what we can't do is the, the, the acid, we can't fight the acid. So we basically use these three kinds of, of um, formation products to protect with our materials. Here are the, the range of the material possibilities that SVT products have in this kind of area. So we got a, a whole um, range of, of possibilities. We got a really, really great uh, product portfolio that we can use to protect batteries or to protect everything around the battery. So we got some reactive materials, we got insulating materials, we got seals and, and granulates, we got have some coatings and um, also fire protection panels. I show you later on what you can use in, in which kind of um, yeah, which kind of situation. So for you, I don't know if you if you really know what what passive fire protection um, really is and what 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 kind of material we use so a lot of our materials are intumescent materials um, intumescent um, is the material starts to react at the temperature of approximately 
150 degrees and build an insulating layer of carbon foam. As you can see below, there are the small, <clears throat> the, the reaction temperature, temperature starts and you, you, um, the material builds a foam that insulates the substrate. Now I'm starting with the products that we use. We, for example, this one is, is a coating that can be used in many different ways. It's a PU based coating that's um, developed for the rolling stock area, but also can use in the battery safety area because they're, they're, it has a large protection of um, variety of, of the chemicals and mechanical impact. So it, it can use for storage or transport, or it can use for battery cells, or it can use for the, the battery system. It depends on the requirements on the, on the system, but you can use it. You got a high climatic um, resistance from this material. It's, it's, it's um, water resistant and has already some sound um, uh, reducing properties that you can use. But in the case of the battery, you don't have this much um, sounds. So you don't need this, this very much. You also have short drying times and process times. That's of course um, really important for the, the big customers, the big OEMs, for example, the, the automotive guys. So this, this product here is, as I told you before, we got some intumescent um, coatings or intumescent materials, but we also have some cooling materials. This um, coating is a cooling material, so it's ablative, it's, it's endothermic. Um, you can use it to, to cool down some this substrate. It reacts at a temperature approximately 200 uh, degrees and have bonded water inside and release this bonded, wa bonded water and um, cool down the, the system or cool down the construction. So um, it's it's one of our oldest materials. It's over 20 years now in in, um, in charge. And yeah, it's, it's really, really good for, for cooling down the substrates. Now we go to the topic of fabrics. We also have a lot of fabrics that we can use for different kind of requirements. So, for I, for I, I tell you this all very generally because there are so many different kind of requirements that we have um, for the battery cell inside, or for the system, or for the storage, or for the transport. That we we have this we don't have this one solution we can use everything so maybe we can use a fabric for for cooling down or for for um, prevent the, the whole construction like a, a cabinet for example you can put it inside and if the cells react you have to, you can cool down the the, um, the construction and you can and can the intermescent foam builds an insulating layer Also, you can combine these two materials. So as you can see here on the picture, you got the blue one, that's the cooling material, and you got the red one. The red one is the intermescent material. If you combine these two together, you can see in the table, um, there are, you can get so much energy from the fire and cool down the whole structure. You got a minimal thickness of 1.7 millimeters or a maximum thickness of 4.5 millimeters. And as you can see, you can you can achieve up to EA90 in a in a construction, but you already you don't really need 90 minutes in the case of fire uh, in, the, in the battery fire, and you have three times more bonded water than a comparable plasterboard, so you are thinner and you are lighter, and um, the the construction the lightweight is the main focus from us. Here are some other products that we can use. For example, that's a PU-based foam or a cast PU-based casting system. The casting system you can use for uh, example for cable management um, and the foam. We got some projects right now where we have this foam and we cut it by water jet. We can we have a water jet inside a water jet cutting machine in, in one of our production sites. 
and we can cut these kind of materials um, perfectly in form uh, of the cells. So you can cover the cells with this form, for example, and if you got a thermal runaway, um, the, the foam is, is also into massive materials, um, is between the cells and the, 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 um, stops the propagation of one cell to another cell. As I told you before, we got some, we call it the special solutions. So we get some, some fire protection granulate. And with this granulate, it's possible to, to produce um, 3D printed uh, components with fire protection requirements and um, some injection molded parts, as you can see on the, on the picture below on the left side. So this granulate is 100% into mass material. So if you got the, the special construction, the special form of, of, your, of your component that, that have to be fire um, retardant or have fire protection requirements, you can use this granulate for injection molding or even print your own 3D part. Also, we have some ceilings. It it's, um, could be important uh, and could be interesting for um, storage, for example. You have the ceiling, um, which you can have. Uh, it's, it's very flexible. You can have it with with different kind of production. So you got the extrusion one. That's hundred percentage um, graphite base, so the um, intermescent. Or you got the um, the co-extrusion one. So you got one part um, is the the intermescent material that builds the foam, and the other part is an, is a, a normal used um, material for ceilings like PE or PVM or something like that, then you have a co-extrusion um, ceiling. We have some panels and some filler. Um, for example, with these panels, you can um, build a partitioning between the cells. So like as I told you with the fire protection form already, um, you can build a partitioning between the cells. If one cell got in um, an event of fire, got a thermal runaway, you can protect the other cells from, from the cell, but you also can use it for, for lining in, in boxes, for example. We got some projects where we, where we fill up some space in, in, in uh, um, storage or transport boxes, fill up with, with these um, fire protection boards. And um, yeah, you can use it for for the boxes when, when batteries are already got the thermal runaway and um, have to be storage or have to be transported from one point to another point, then if, if more cells in the, in the box react, the fire don't come out. So you protect um, the whole box, for example, with this panels. Also, we got some filler material for, for ceilings or stuff like that. It's now uh, that's our uh, our main solution i would say it's, it's our best solution which we can use for every topic and um, we got a lot of projects with with this kind of um, solution because as i already told you the main focus is the lightweight so we got a partner called zartex um, we developed a, a product together that's called zartex leo coated it's a, a composite material that um, we call it the next level of fire protection. We have the high impact protection. Later on, I, I show you some um, testing, what, what we are doing with our materials to test them, to evaluate them. Um, we got a high impact protection, like no material we haven't before. Um, we can it form in, in, in every kind of um, part you need. And the most important things, we got the weight savings. Um, I can tell you, for example, many customers or many OEMs in the, in the automotive sector um, wants to use aluminium because it's light, but the aluminium doesn't fulfill the, the fire protection requirements. There, now that we got a um, standard from China, and I don't know if you, if you already know it, the standard for automotive from China is you have to protect the battery system for about five minutes. In these five minutes, um, no flames should come out of this um, of the battery of the of the whole construction from the battery. 
So the aluminum got a melting point for about 500 degrees. If a cell react, we got temperatures from about 1200, 1300 degrees. So the aluminum are melting away. So the, the, the OEMs have to use steel because steel don't, um, don't melt. But with this material of composite, we can build a, a, like a layer for the, for the, the parts uh, of the aluminum. And this kind of inlay um, protects the aluminum from, from melting. So um, the OEMs can build lighter with aluminum. For example, just the case of, of the, the battery system. If you use aluminum in comparison to steel, the steel is for about 25 kilograms heavier. So as you already know, um, um, when my car is heavier, I don't have the range and the range of the, the electric cars is very important. So they, they have to build lighter, they want to build lighter. And with this solution, we, we can achieve this goal. Right there. So here you can see some pictures, as I already told you, we have some, um, yeah, some possibilities for this material. So we can build it um, in a monolithic, uh, mon monolithic structure. It's, it's already um, only the, the, the fiber um, with the fire protection coating and then some epoxy resin. And you got a small for about one, one to um, 2.5 millimeters thick uh, inlay that you can use, but it's already um, possible to build the whole battery box or the whole um, transportation case or um, everything you, you, you want to build. Can you build with this kind of um, material? You can use it as a sandwich panel. You have, um, of course, you have more benefits like the acoustic bond because of the foam. You can use some cork inside it for the acoustic. Um, you can change the core material. You can you have different kinds of structures that you can build up. And the most important thing, you have the fire protection. The fire protection is, um, as you can see on the picture above, the, the red layer is on the, on the fabric and goes to the whole construction. So with this kind of material, we can withstand every test so far. And so for us, it's, it's the best material right now because we can um, achieve all the fire protection goals and more important, the, the whole impact of, of the uh, cell when it reacts and goes to thermal runaway. <laughs> now it's, I guess for you, the, the most interesting part of, of this um, presentation, our research and development. We, we did a lot of research and development in our four R&D um, um, labors that we have in our company. Um, we, every product we produce by ourselves. So um, the research and development is, is really big in, the, in our company and we do, do a lot of testing and we got a test the available by uh, by us that we use to to check the materials and um, to prove the materials if they can withstand these high uh, impacts you can see it right now what we have to do for these tests but the, what are the the requirements for these tests as we know from from our customers and from from um, yeah, from some self knowledge, um, we have a requirements for a test uh, setup. Um, if a cell go through the thermal runaway, we got an explanation of about 20 seconds. 20 seconds is uh, the, the range of time where the, the cell react. We got an instant temperature of 1,400 degrees. So like a jet flame with particle bombardment. So there are all the particles that inside the battery comes out through a small hole like a jet flame and penetrate the, the substrate. So this, this was the, the requirements for our test setup. So we got in contact with some partners and built <coughs> a really small 
but really effective um, test setup to you um, to, to check our materials, to check the materials if they can withstand uh, this high requirements in, in the case of, of uh, battery fire. So as you can see here, that's the test setup. Um, you got here your, your inert mass, your propelling charge, that's all in the sleeve in, in the ignition unit. Then you have your, um, your substrate, and then, yeah, then you have a, um, yeah, uh, um, two millimeters or two centimeters, 20 millimeters, yeah, um, is the way from the, the end of the, the insert mass to the substrate. So we simulate a battery system um, where the, the cover of the battery is for about 20 millimeters um, above the cell. So, and then we, we um, let the cell react and go through the, the cover of the battery system, for example. But it don't have to be the cover of the battery system. It also can be a, a cabinet cover or something like that. But the test is really for us to, to show that our materials can withstand this, this requirements or even don't withstand. We also tested for about 50 or 60 materials, different kinds of materials. Um, I'll show you later on. And um, that's really impressive because it's a very, very simple and very, um, yeah, very simple and very fast way to get a test set up. Now the, the customers from us don't have to go to a large scale fire test with the whole battery system. Don't can, um, they, they can test the, the materials before by us. And if we pass our tests, they can go to the large scale fire test and um, hopefully they will, they will pass it. Here's a picture from, from this um, kind of test setup that's already patented by us. As you can see, here are the, the substrate. It's, it's an aluminum plate, I guess, or a steel plate. You have the, the two, two, uh, 20 millimeters from the, the substrate to the, to the reaction material. And you can see it's very simple, but it's um, very effective. Here you can see um, some some different material combinations that we have tested. So, as you can see below on the left side, there are the test uh, for just just only a um, two millimeter aluminium plate, and the the jet flame goes through for about three or four seconds, I guess. Then uh, the jet flame comes out on the other side. We have tested this with some layer structure of uh, our fabrics of our coatings we got the double layer uh, ceramic uh, fabric as you can see the hole in the side uh, in, in the middle of the of the um, substrate that will um, protects the the aluminium plate for about six or seven seconds and it's a uh, double layered ceramic so um, as you can see there are a lot of temperature a lot of um, erosion um, that's that's the really really strong impact that the material um, has to be protected. And on the on the uh, right side, you can see the material is artex Leo coated, as I already told you. Um, that's for about three and three and a half millimeters. This plate, and um, without aluminium, without any substrate, and the fire can't go, go through it, and um, they stop the impact for about twenty two seconds. That's that's the time I already told you, which the the battery reacts and. We can achieve this goal with this kind of material and so that's that's the reason why we keep on um, focus on this material in the area of battery safety because we know it works here a little bit more about our um, test technology center so as uh, i told you we got we got four production sites and in this kind in these four production sites we've got six furnaces um, where we do the whole testing of materials for, for fire protection. But as I told you, the event of fire in a, in a battery, um, we can't do in this furnace because that the furnace will 
will um, break down. So um, we have to build up this test setup, as I, as I told you, as I showed you before. But we got these, these um, furnaces to do some other orientated fire tests, maybe, for example, um, for cabinets or storage uh, and transport boxes. You can use the, the, the furnace to check the, the construction of the side walls, for example, if, if you achieve your, your fire protection goal of 30, 60 or 90 minutes. Um, we have a large scale fire test with an opening up three to three meters um, where you can install up to 350 measuring points. Um, yeah, we, it, for us, it's our customer service to do this development tests, as I told you. Um, also with our patent battery solution, um, it's all customer orientated. You, um, we get the samples from our customers tested for, for them and, and tell them okay, you, you can pass the test or you won't pass the test or it's okay, it's not okay. Yeah, the, the YSVT, the last, last uh, chart from my, my um, yeah, you got a wide range of high quality products. I just give you a small overview. Um, I, I know that that's a lot of information about different kind of products. Um, for us, it's quite, quite difficult to, to put them in the line because we have over 500 products in the group and we can use all of them. And so that you got only a, a small selection of what we can do and we will find the, the right solution for, for our customers. <coughs> we got our own R&D and in-house testing, of course, as I told you. We got some standard solution, yeah, but the most thing we do in, in this kind of business is the, the tailored solution. So we got the, this tailored to your needs. Um, you got a requirement, you, you ask us for help and we will check based on your requirements. Okay. What can we do for you and your project to achieve your fire protection goals? That's um, our, our main reason. Yeah. Uh, we got our own documentation system, of course, and um, yeah, it's the, that's the, that's the um, normal things. Um, but for you, you should know, and, and would you, would you, when you think about this, this presentation, um, we don't have this one solution. We have many solutions and we got this tailored made solution. So we, we go through, through your project, through your requirements, check, okay, what, what can we do for you maybe? And, um, put on some different kind of solutions then test them with you together, of course to to fix your fire protection problems yeah that's the the last chart from mine um, thank you really much for your intention i'm a li little bit ill as you can hear so i'm sorry for for my my speech um hopefully you have a, a nice um nice uh, other presentations and um, a good talk to each other and um, hopefully um, we can see or hear each other. If you got some problems, we will take care. We will help you wherever we can. And um, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Frederick. I feel I now know everything about ba batteries, don't you? Yes, of course. It's uh, much more information and for me personally, it's really useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like uh, I really gained uh, much more information because uh, this this topic is really much much cloudy. No, not, not so clear enough, but now it's it's right. Uh, let's make a break, a short break from uh, battery safety. We'll get back to that uh, afterwards. And uh, let's meet Kamil Marianek from Foamax, uh, who will tell us about the foam in uh, refrigerator area. It means the cooling areas. And there are lots of lots of challenges in, in this kind of case. Uh, how do you think, Edward? This uh, water in low temperatures, foam in lo uh, lo low temperatures, it's problematic. What other capabilities are there? What do you think? Uh, according to uh, European standard, is uh, uh, all systems, uh, extinguishing systems, uh, lower than five uh, 
uh, five degrees, uh, degrees of Celsius. It's pro quite problematic and uh, quite uh, expensive solution uh -huh. because of um, uh, challenges for for uh, the production uh, racks. Mm -hmm. It's uh, uh, approximately 10 or 14 uh, meters high. Okay. And uh, in such as uh, premises, we have uh, only one uh, uh, reasonable solution is with CSMA um, sprinkler system, which are not so really cheap, and uh, the solutions uh, it's quite quite expensive. So uh, another option is uh, with uh, oxygen reducing uh, systems, but also um, uh, a lot of uh, challenges uh, to uh, complete. Uh, uh, all these uh, premises uh, to have uh, quite uh, close and mm -hmm. without. Uh, so you mean the total isolation? Yes, has, without has without leakage mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. of uh, uh, nitrogen and uh, and uh, and that's uh, because of technological processes is quite uh, difficult to to manage. Uh, so I think uh, if if it is uh, so really uh, solved uh, with the uh, foam. Mm -hmm. it's uh in the in the in the in in this topic it's uh, a lot of, lot of space uh, for such a solution i think in the in the, uh, in the, our market let's say yeah yeah okay so let's hear for, from uh, kamil marianek kamil uh, the stage is yours Hello once again, it's Kamil Marianek from Fomax speaking. Okay, next topic will be really important in case of the uh, protecting the places where we cannot have temperature above five degrees or maybe there is a, some kind of freezage cooler. So that's why we need to, uh, we need to protect uh, also in case of the fire, but we cannot use water. Uh, and normally in the past, I could not believe that who invited this, that people used as a antifreeze coolant glycol really dangerous flammable liquid instead of water they put inside the pipe glycol dangerous without low biodegradability toxic substance the substance which is increasing a fire a lot we can have small fire when the head of sprinkler open, we have fire like that if you are using glycol. Why we are using this? But really good is that from 2022, NFPL will state that using of glycol is prohibited. So that's why we are coming here with our solution from our Swedish partner, Temper S. So let's speak now about other way of protecting in case of the low temperatures. Here's a few words about the Temper Technology AB company. Uh, they are prepare, they are producing uh, coolants not only for a sprinkler installation, also for the havoc installation over 30 years. So they are selling globally uh, all over the world. And here we are just coming with the glycor free. Glycor free, it means that it's really good for uh, environment this is version of temperatures you can see here it's from minus 10 up to minus 55 so the range is really wide and using this range you can protect all type of the investment in case of the low temperatures look here all, all the advantages so the uh, um, we just proved i will show you later on it that with tyco sprinklers with our sprinklers from K80 to K360, we proved that Temperes is more efficient than water. It's extinguishing faster than water. Glycol is not extinguishing. With the glycol, you are waiting when water will finally start going out from the sprinkler. This first moment where you are just adding a lot of energy to the fire, it means that if several uh, heads will open, you can increase the fire to uncontrolled 
and you cannot later extinguish it. Such a situation happened in Germany. So look and ask all the uh, companies which are providing the uh, glycol, ask them, did they test with sprinkler glycol? And if is there in their glycol or in their sprinklers written that it can be used with the glycol? No one will prepare such a states for you. No one. Because why? We knew exactly that it's increasing fire a lot. Environmental safe. Look what this diagram says. Can we go a bit closer? Let's look this uh, slide closer. It shows this diagram that after nine days, after nine days, biodegradability is above 99%. With nine days only, it's really good product. Believe me that toxicity, as I said with the foam, toxicity of soap can be even higher. So that shows how good is that product in case of the environmental problems. Also, we can see that glycol is like glue. If it's low temperature, just try to push it out. It's highly tough as it has a big kinematic viscosity. If you look to our glycofree temper S here, it, have, it has a lot smaller kinematic viscosity. It means it's much easier to flow inside the pipes. Okay, as it's not the base of the uh, temper S, it's a salt, organic salt. Everyone can say, oh my God, organic salt, it will corrode everything. No, 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 no. As it has advantage corrosion package. How it's working is exactly shown on this uh, on this diagram. So here on the inhibitor molecules forms a temporary protective layer when it's an air inside. And believe me, we checked in our CNBOP. That's why our product is listed. We checked in CNBOP that corrosion is zero point. 0, 0, 16 millimeter per year. 0. 0, 0, 16 millimeter per year. It's nothing. And we check this on a stainless steel, we check it on a black steel, carbon steel, and we check it also with the brass. So that's why we are 100% sure that no corrosion will be if you will use our temper S system. And as you can see, here are the uh, types, different types of fire extinguishing fluids. To be honest, glycol will be never fire extinguishing fluids because it will be increaser of fire, not extinguisher of fire. So as you can see, add energy to fire, it's alkaline glycol, propylene glycol, ethyl alcohol, glycerin. And on the second side, where you are adding no energy to the fire, or even it's working better than water, you're having organic salt. Temperance. Okay, let's play this movie. The tests of water and antifreeze in wet pipe sprinkler systems are shown in the same figure. The water is shown as a reference medium on the left, glycol on the right, and temper S in the middle. The comparison highlights a considerable difference between glycol-based antifreeze and temper S. In fact, in comparison with plain water, temper S is seen to have far better extinguishing performance. Why this happen? Why this happen? Uh, we use densities we use densities really small here. We, in this test, we didn't try to extinguish. We just try to show you the differences in how big is the flame within a water, temperest, and propylene glycol. So you, you see this now, three type of extinguishers. Water most common because the cheap and it's everywhere. Temperest and propylene glycol. Look how small fire flames are 
within the temperus, they are bigger within the water, and they are crazy with glycol. Ask yourself, or you would like to still use the glycol? Really? Let's just skip it. Okay, we can see now, same situation. It was really small density, not density as we use in uh, sprinklers. It was really small nozzle, just to show how each type of liquids is reacting within a fire. And on the left, propylene glycol. Oh my goodness. Water. Water is our 0 0.0. And the temperess. It was test done in Sweden. Later we will speak about the Polish test, CNBOP. And both tests are showing same, that the uh, heating consumption and heating decreasing, we can say, within the temperature, it's much better than with water. And with glycol, it's like you're adding, I don't know, gasoline to the fire. Instead of glycol, you can have the gasoline. There will be no difference. We did a fire test for uh, um, uh, extinguishing efficiency uh, in, in NMPA Dresden. So we are having three certified accredited body which tested our temperance. It's a CNBOP in Poland. It's an MPA German really good institute in Dresden. And you will find the really good, really good, I think that maybe even the best one, which is making fire tests, uh, body SP Boras in Sweden. So that's why we measure and test all the parameters several times. And that's why we can be sure how it looks like. Let's play this movie. Here we see in the TMDOP test where we use K160, it's called it a fire. On the left, you see the water. On the right, there is a temperess. This sprinkler is not, uh, is not uh, um, extinguishing, it's just controlling. Extinguishing sprinkler is ASFR. Here is ELO, K160, big drops, big drops. But look, on the left, you see water. On the right, there is a temper S. Low, really good biodegradability, much better efficiency with extinguishing than even water. If it good that we are not having glycol here, as I think that this warehouse will be completely destroyed as fire will go up even to roof. You see? Of course, there is a package and storage information basic if you would like to have it. So uh, normally we are selling within a 1000 cubic meters. And what is really good? Glycol, you are mixing with water at site. So investor, insurer, inspector can never know what type of freeze temperature they mixed at job site. If you are buying from us Temperess, you're having ready product, which you have to fill your installation. There's no mixing with water, no mixing. It's a ready product to fill a pipes. Here's a design guidance line. Uh, there are topic in, there are a few in general informations uh, how it should look like the installation. Of course, it has to be really clean. There should be no no dust, no no rocks inside. Uh, it's really important also to fill the system completely with temperature to avoid situation that there are some kind of air inside. So the really important is to always build uh, uh, pipes within a, uh, at least 2% going down. And uh, that's why it's so important for, for, for our installation to fit completely 100% of temperature to avoid situation that there are some kind of air inside the piping. Oh, there are several information how we should and how we shouldn't use the uh, temperature. The complete guidance uh, we are uh, sending you, it's uh, 40 pages in which we are telling you uh, how you should 
uh, use the temporize with what type of uh, growth connection you can use it with what type of connection you cannot use it what uh, uh, type of glue you can use it and all the sealing membranes uh, how they should be prepared and with what what type of materials Here you can see the part of uh, the uh, what uh, are suitable materials, what are no suitable materials. So as always within a sub, uh, zinc and galvanized steel and tin solder or soft solder cannot be used. It's a standard. But other type of the materials, as you can see, the really long lists uh, are suitable to use with our tamper um, system. Recommended connection. Of course, the best way on the world is if it's we are having uh, welding or bracing. Uh, it is the best way, but not only one way which we can go. Also, we can go with the groove type of the connection. So recommendation here the, for the pipe components. You can see Loctite and Unipack. And you can see also the uh, flange joints, uh, uh, which type of can be done. So PDM, bottle rubber, synthetic rubber, nitro rubber. The case is to not use the uh, Teflon. We also proved by CNBOP and by uh, tests uh, done by producer that we can use Tyco grooved connection, Greenel connection. They are, they are sealing really well and there will be no leakages. We tested over half a year uh, within a pressure 16, no, sorry, 24 bars, 24 bars. Uh, when we just checked, uh, is there any leakages and we didn't found even one. So this, uh, this of course, this test is constantly, uh, we are constantly making, we didn't stop it. So it means that this pipe is still under the pressure and we will check it every month. It's any kind of uh, leakages to be 100% sure that even with 24 bars, really high pressure, with high pressure, because normally installations are having 10 up to 12 bars. So we are checking with 24 bars and if there will be no leakages with 24 bars, we can be also sure that it wouldn't happen this in your pipes, um, in your system, in your installation. And the important thing is always to check it, uh, to check it uh, how good and proper is your uh, temperance uh, when after two years, three years, five years. So every year we are just expecting from you or we are going ourselves for a, uh, for a sample of temperance which we are taking from the pipe and we are checking and making analysis or oh, still the temperature, freezing temperature is is okay, is still is still the uh, amount of uh, corrosion inhibitors is okay. If amount of COVID, uh, co uh, inhibitors is going down, we can easily add them even if the temper is in a pipe. We can add it uh, correct amount just to become the person that these um, um, inhibitors are with the correct amount. So here we can see the references. So in Poland, we just did now the really uh, important investment for a cow plant where we sold over 50 tons of the Tempers, we just also did Unipack, it's, uh, it's uh, part of Unilever, so uh, we also did it and several other investments in Poland and the big investments also we just did in Europe like for a little in Germany, so the complete list with, um, of the really nice numbers, investments we are having ready to send you to provide you. And here are the types of the buildings where you can use it. So low pressure so food application high pressure water mist system as you can see the food application vehicles uh, heritage buildings rolling rocks so we can also use it our temperance not only with the uh, water you can just also with the water mist system as i just said <clears throat> big logistics and a little uh, it was done together with our sfr sprinkler and uh, together with a uh, temperance uh, uh, liquid, as you can see, it was 33,000 square meters of the logistic center. Uh, <clears throat> each logistic center distributes food for uh, 65 little supermarkets. So you can see that it's a general big little um, uh, little uh, logistic center. Really important for this client. Uh, you can see the how it looked like from inside. So it was Tyco SFR sprinkler. It's really good that we also tested this. We've seen CNBOP all our SFR, LO, and K80 and K115 sprinkler uh, together with our Tempers. So we can prove you that 
our temperas is working with all the type of the sprinkler and it's working better than even the water. So it means that if you are having FM approvals or other approvals with water, we can prove you that using our uh, temperas, uh, we are having same uh, parameters or even better. So here is the warehouse, 48 uh, cubic meters with temperas 15. It was uh, in a bit uh, It was low pressure sprinkler system, and uh, it was one year ago delivered. High pressure water mist system. We can also uh, in, in, we are working together with all the famous brands of uh, water mist uh, producers. Uh, so uh, all of them they know our uh, temperest technology. So. Uh, all the producers uh, are also recommending and they are not having any kind of problems when you are using our um, temperest technology uh, together with the water mist solution. And as you can see, here is a reference of the producers with which we make it. So uh, I think that all they are all the biggest ones are producers from all over the Europe. As from Mario, Fultra Fog, Fog Homemaker, Semco, Fogtech, Eurogamma, Protec, Feu, and Aquasis. So we are having references with all these producers, with the eight biggest producers which you can have uh, on your market. So I think that you will easily find out one of the producers and the distributor channel in your country. So we can work together with them in case of a uh, high pressure system where there is a low temperature. Okay. So thank you for listening. Hope that we can cooperate in case of also with the low temperature coolant. Please contact us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kamil. Thank you for your mood, enthusiastic vibes. You know, thank you very much. Well, if I uh, remember anything, I will remember your presentations and that's for sure. So <laughs> really good one. But from those uh, good vibes, let's come back to the batteries. It's a very, very also interesting topic. Uh, it's not a finish. We are only beginning to, to make interest on this very, very important and maybe futuristic at, uh, at this uh, period uh, item. Uh, this time, let's just uh, think or maybe discuss about the probable extinguishing of, uh, of battery on fire. And uh, as, we, as we've uh, made jokes that we should come back sometime to, to our fi fire academy, go back and once again re remind ourselves of the famous triangle of, of, of burning. <laughs> so that maybe this uh, reduction of oxygen, which you were mentioning for the, f for the foams in the refrigeration uh, areas, maybe this one uh, could help. What do you think? What your, what your ideas on that topic? Yes, I see two problems. Uh, one problem is uh, to extinguish such a car in a car parking. Mm -hmm. And another thing is for firefighters. Uh, uh, they, are, um, uh, they are doing action face-to-face uh, -face in such a uh, kind of uh, cars. And uh, what kind of, uh, of um, algorithm is uh, the best solution? I don't know exactly because, uh, let's say, um, uh, the cells of uh, electromobile uh, is uh, uh, quite uh, it's good. underneath. Yes, yes, well, yeah. it's quite good uh -huh. covered uh, uh -huh. by by steel, by by aluminium, mm -hmm. and and so on, so on. And to deliver such as uh, extinguishing materials is uh, is no. quite uh, problem mm -hmm. problematic. And uh, uh, another thing, what kind of uh, extinguishing material should be? Uh, is it enough with uh, with water, or is it uh, is it completely dangerous mm -hmm. uh, to to yeah, yeah. to to do such a Logical. thing with uh, with water? Uh, should be uh, uh, this uh, water with uh, foams, uh, additives, and, mm -hmm. and so on mm -hmm. and so on. And uh, another thing is uh, how to manage such a thing uh, in, a, in a car parking, uh, where is, uh, uh, where is uh, uh, let's say, uh, usual uh, extinguishing system, let's mm -hmm. say, yeah. uh, uh, fill it with the water. So um, I think it's... Uh, 
could be quite problematic uh, without reducing uh, the oxygen yes. from the fire mm -hmm. um, yes. burner, let's say, uh, uh, and to, to, to kiss such as fire. Yeah, yeah. Well, there are still lots of unknowns, and uh, yes, we talk... Well, we talk about the future, but basically it's all reality. There yes. are lo lots of electric cars, electric uh, other means of transportation, which we uh, should take protection. And I hope uh, that our partner from Stubich uh, Active Systems, Mr. Christoph Kuchenbecher, will clarify this issue and show us the technical means of extinguishing such fires. So, Mr. Christoph, uh, the stage is yours. Hello, uh, my name is Christoph Kuchenbecker and uh, I will uh, tell you something about uh, the unit company of uh, Stöbig in Germany and uh, I will tell you something about uh, the products strain locks and uh, strain box. Um, so let's have a look uh, to the Stöbig Active uh, Safety. It's a company uh, and we have um, six, um, our portfolio has uh, six um, um, cases. First of all, we uh, make um, application in oxy reduction. Second is uh, we will uh, detect the uh, fire by optical sensors. And the third part is that we are able to uh, make the fire extinguishing. And uh, the fourth one is uh, the IoT. So every um, part of our solution is uh, connected by IoT. So everybody is, uh, uh, can have the information about the uh, health of the machine and uh, about the situation on site. The fifth part, this is uh, the main uh, part we are talking today, is uh, the battery safety. This is a strain lock and the strain box system. And uh, for sure, for all these uh, um, parts, we need the service and the support. Um, for your information, the Stöbig Active Safety is a daughter of the Stöbig uh, Group uh, in Hanover. It's, it is located and uh, we are the uh, experts in just a second. We are the experts in the uh, field of technical fire protection. Um, the guys in the company, they have uh, many years of experience uh, in the design of fire protection solutions. So we don't sell uh, just um, a uh, component, but uh, we sell uh, full solutions of uh, fire protection. And uh, we make it, uh, make the, the whole system of the Stöbisch group uh, and we um, bring the technical uh, fire prevention and uh, fire protection solutions to the Stöbig uh, group, not only the uh, protection for the uh, buildings. Um, and uh, what we can say is uh, we are the youngest member of the Stöbig group. Uh, we are on uh, the market uh, since uh, 2019, but uh, the experience of the uh, people is uh, more than uh, 10 years in this fire uh, protection. Okay. So, the um, problem uh, with lithium uh, ion or ion batteries is that they normally are safe, but uh, if they are used uh, not in the right way, they can um, damage, can be damaged. And then we have the problem that the, um, uh, the increase of uh, temperature is uh, very rapid uh, after damage of the uh, um, system. Uh, on the right side, you can see the cause of damage. Uh, normally, uh, you have mechanical damage and uh, thermal impact. Uh, for, for example, the direct satellite on uh, smartphones. Uh, the aging uh, is uh, for sure, uh, after a while, it's a problem if the uh, uh, charging and discharging um, system. 
and uh, electrical impact, impact uh, is caused by overcharging and uh, deep discharging. Um, as you can see on the uh, right uh, top, uh, there is uh, Stöbig Technology. It's uh, also a uh, daughter of the Stöbig company in uh, Goslar, and uh, they uh, designed the uh, strain lock and the strain box. These are the uh, solutions um, for uh, safe battery handling. Um, What is a strain lock? The strain lock is a cabinet for uh, uh, storage of uh, batteries and uh, also for charging of uh, lithium uh, ion batteries. And you can see here on the left side, the uh, yellow uh, painted uh, strain lock. This is a standard uh, system. And uh, there are some uh, big advantages of this uh, system. The stable locking is very important because if there is an um, uh, damage in the inside the, the cabinet and the battery starts uh, blowing up. Uh, you can have uh, just um, one bar uh, over pressure, and so you need a stable locking of the cabinet um, there, so there is no problem with the doors. Um, then, uh, if you open the uh, the cabinet, you can see the um, the racks. Normally we have five racks. In each rack we, uh, we can, um, um, we can um, store three kilowatt uh, uh, of kilowatt per hour of uh, energy and uh, you can inside you can install the uh, outlet strip and you can uh, install the uh, clamping rods and um, for charging and discharging the systems. Some of our clients use uh, this cabinet for uh, testing the battery uh, loading and, uh, and discharging um, um, period. Uh, the control system for gas is uh, also uh, in the um, cabinet as an optional uh, function. Uh, normally we have in each cabinet we have a gas filter system. If there is uh, uh, one uh, battery pack is going is blowing up, then uh, you uh, will have um, the <coughs> very dangerous um, uh, gas, and uh, the filter system uh, is uh, so is constructed so that uh, the um, the gas is uh, filtered and it's no damage for the uh, people standing uh, around. Um, if the if one of the uh, battery is blowing up in one of the um, racks, uh, there is no influence to the other racks, uh, top or bottom, because uh, the racks are uh, isolated, and so normally uh, the the damage of one system couldn't um, uh, affect uh, another system, so the damage is as low as uh, possible. Um, on the right side, you can see the dimensions. Uh, this is uh, the standard system of our uh, cabinet um, with the uh, weight and uh, normal uh, uh, dimensions. But uh, you can also see the cabinet is uh, in, colored in red, and uh, so that means that the Stöbig Active Safety um, is the specialist for the special, special solutions. Um, you can uh, you can get. Uh, we make both. We sell the uh, standard uh, cabinets in yellow, but uh, all we also are able to uh, um, do something um, the the customer wants to have. Um, some of the special solutions are the special color or power circuit of each drawer is equipped uh, with its uh, fuse something happens and um, the individual individual uh, drawers lock in the event of damage we can uh, do but uh, we can also bring special cables inside the cabinet uh, temperature um, uh, systems for for uh, watching temperature and uh, each uh, idea the customer wants to have this train lock is uh, just a second 
is uh, here we have uh, the advantages uh, of the uh, strain lock. Um, very important is that uh, the filtering of the toxic gas and uh, the power circuit for each draw is equipped with their own fuse. Uh, that's uh, not in the normal system. Um, and on the left side, uh, bottom, you can see the gas filter system. The mechanical resistance is, um, as I said, for the uh, treasure inside the cabinet after uh, damage in the batteries. Um, and uh, the same, this system is for sure uh, tested. We have uh, some certifi certificates. And uh, in case of uh, a problem, no flames uh, um, or sparks uh, can escape from the cabinet. Also, no fluids and uh, no solids. Um, on the right side, you can see some uh, parts of uh, the cabinet inside the rack. If you have um, um, an uh, issue in, in transportation of uh, batteries, uh, then you can uh, use the strain box. Uh, here we can see the uh, three sizes, ML and uh, XL. Um, this is for transportation of uh, the lithium-ion batteries. And for sure, also special solutions are available on request. You can you get uh, also special solutions from Stilbich Active Safety. Uh, strain box uh, is uh, similar to the strain lock. Um, it's uh, also uh, it's very important uh, that the uh, system is ADR conform. That means uh, that uh, you are able to uh, transport the uh, batteries uh, on the streets without uh, any problems. And um, yeah, you can see that uh, the persons and uh, the assets is. Uh, protected by these uh, cabinets and the boxes for sure. Um, so we have uh, the dimensions of uh, the uh, box. And uh, as you can see on the right side, uh, we can uh, make the custom solution. We have some uh, companies, some customers, they uh, have the full, full uh, lithium ion pack of, uh, of a car uh, and it's uh, packed in uh, a custom uh, sized uh, box. Uh, the energy consumption uh, or the energy content in the boxes uh, started with 8 uh, kilowatt per hour. Uh, and goes up to 125 and uh, if there are special solutions uh, necessary then uh, you can um, increase uh, also this uh, energy content. The weight for sure is uh, exceptional to the uh, energy content because of the uh, material uh, strengths we need. So um, you can uh, find us in uh, Hanover, that uh, is 100 kilometer near Goslar. So um, these are our contact information. And uh, yeah, we are uh, pleased if uh, you have more questions and uh, we can talk about uh, the right solution uh, to your um, system. Thank you very much. Dear friends and colleagues, well, finally, it's the end. Our two-day journey uh, has come to an end, and I would like to say that the second edition of Baltic Fire Forum is finished. Well, maybe you say that we've showed lots of problems, and that would be true, uh, not showing all the time the main solutions. But for me, and giving uh, all the task and our main goal for us, is the best way to show the discussion is to point out the problems. When we start to discuss, to discuss among ourselves, uh, among HVAC, uh, electrician, engineers, 
between uh, fire safety engineers or smoke exhaust uh, designers. When we talk between the government and the business, this is when the truth comes out. So I'm really glad and not actually afraid of that we were talking also the hard topics that we don't, do not know the solution itself. But it, the main point here is to start talking. But start talking, well, we've started. Now we are, what we have to do is to share our knowledge or to share the information what we're, we, that we were given and to show it to the world. I'm very happy that uh, the Baltic Fire Forum has expanded and we've came also to our friends from Ukraine, Belarus and up just to Finland that, uh, that uh, gives me really happiness. And I'm really looking forward to meet with you once again, hopefully after two years in a live, uh, in a live event, not the online, where we'll have lots of training, we'll have some fire, flames and so on. Without what, Baltic Fire Forum is nothing. But with you, we are everything. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.